the hood. In the hood. What it good be, hope it's what it should be. This is your boy N O R E. What up, it's DJ E F N. This is Military Crazy War Happy Hour, Drink Champ Happy Chance, Hour. Baby. Make some noise! <laughs> now, when me and E F N started this show, we looked at each other and we said, there's so many other platforms uh, for new artists and uh, for new outlets and things like that. We wanted to cater to super. Legends. We wanted to cater to icons. We wanted to uh, uh, dedicate it to superheroes. People who have been doing this. When I was researching this brother that we're about to introduce, they said that he started doing his thing in 77. I said, holy shit. That's the year I was born. <laughs> this motherfucker has been literally doing it my whole life. Literally. <laughs> he's, a, he's a person that if you're Puerto Rican and you know how to dance or if you just a hip-hop, if you a hip-hop, period, and you have a hip-hop dance, I don't care what it is. It could be the stinky leg. <laughs> it comes from him. He was the first person that made people, and I imagine the, the, the thing, and then I found out he invented the windmill. It's like talking to Michael Jackson right now. Mm. <laughs> we are happy, ecstatic, vigorous, enthusiastic to have a legend of a legend, an icon of an icon, a person that we all should throw flowers at his feet when he walked down the street. Literally, because his feet is crazy. <laughs> and his legs is too. So in case you don't know who the hell we talking about, we talking about the one, the only, motherfucking crazy yeah. legs! Yeah. <laughs> May you represent me at my funeral. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know what was, was one of the craziest things is... No pun intended. Um, uh, me seeing you on Letterman, right? <laughs> like, um, I'm going back because I had no idea Letterman would even, like, do something like that. Because how was it, for, for, for lack of a better term, I didn't see B-boying at that time as being a commercial. Like, you know what I'm saying? I thought it was, like, some real, you know, Street underground. Shit. So when seeing it on Letterman or seeing that, that, I think like that, was that, like, a beginning of, of B-boying crossing over or no? Yeah, we were there because of Flashdance. Right. So, yeah, that was like... So yeah, what year? That's early That 80s. was, wow. That came out in 83, Flashdance. Right. So when we did late David Letterman's show, I mean, that was kind of wild. I'm going to fucking go all out today because I don't give a fuck anymore. Well, let's go. <laughs> let's go. So <laughs> we, wrote, we, we get set up to do the show, and, and the dude that I was with doing the show was coming off of being high the night before. Is that Ken Swift? Yeah, so okay, he was okay, all okay, fucked okay, up. And okay, okay. We're like, oh shit, how are we going to do these routines? And, and was this acid back huh? then? Was it acid back then? What y'all was no, on? Not oh, acid. Y'all weren't doing acid. No, everybody, no, everybody did acid. Yeah? Everybody, why? Yeah. I don't know why. Not, I don't see B-boys. Nah. Yeah, but a lot of people don't see B-boys as, as stick-up kids too. And, right, right. And, you know, no. we were living double lives. For sure. Right, So right, right. Yeah, so it was wild. So doing that, not knowing how that was going to turn out, Right. And, and um and then the, but the wax shit was a, a, a while ago after that I see David Letterman in a restaurant and I'm thinking like all right well he's probably cool I tell the waiter hey you know I'd like to go say hi to him can you let him know and he's like no because <laughs> of that experience with you guys huh no it's just he's a dick oh shit <laughs> oh shit, oh, shit. <laughs> well, oh. whatever that's him right so nothing happened on the show like no 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 it was all I heard good. you say I, I heard you, this is like the the third time I heard you say. 
um, you didn't really like him when you was there. Nah, I didn't like him. Wow. What was this? Is it dry humor? Yeah, it was uh, it's that that dry humor that I didn't get coming from where I come from because right. I'm like, yo, this motherfucker's stupid, right? You know, right. And, and that's you know at that time, even though like you know we're dancing and right. we were still we were running wild like right. in Central Park, robbing right. people and doing. Right. All you, I got the Central Park, so you're going too fast. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I got all that. Wait, we, wait, the we, reason we were, why you guys were there was you were. We, what did you do for the movie? Consult we, we were, the movie? No, so we danced in flash dance at the beginning, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, at the end, I actually doubled for her. Uh, they actually wa they wanted me to um, teach the girls how to spin on that back in, in 24 hours. And I'm right. like, all right, wow. that's not possible. <laughs> right. So they ended up having me uh, come in the next day and like, hey, you know, uh, the director, Adrian Lyons, like, hey, uh, you know, would you mind dressing up as a woman or whatever? And Leah Turner and all this other stuff. And then you keep your mustache or something like no, that? No, well, first of all, I'm like this. I'm talking to dude like this. I'm like, yo, <laughs> right, right, you know, that's money. That's the money sign. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not even really talking to the dude. I just like this fucking ignorant Bronx dude mm -hmm, with right. 17 years old. And I'm like this in the dude's face. Mm -hmm. and, and he's like, all right, cool, cool. And we want you to shave. Mm. And I'm like, oh, shit, man. <laughs> so I just keep doing that. Um, and I just did it, man. I was just like, fuck it. All right. I did it. And I also, I also like, recently doing the studies, I didn't know that break dancing was frowned upon, the word break dancing. Yeah, is, yeah. Is it, that's what it is, break dancing? Yeah, it doesn't. So the word break dancing doesn't come from hip-hop. It came from my former manager. My manager, the white cool, lady, yeah, right? Yeah, Cool yes, Lady yes, Blue. Yes. And, yeah. and she misspoke in, in, in a meeting, and she was also our publicist. Right. So she was the one... Because y'all laughed at her when she said we, that. We would just... I mean, we would... Man, I was maybe 16 when she did that, 15. Right. And, right. you know, right. she got a British accent. We're from the Bronx. Right. And we're like, ah! <laughs> she said break the whole thing. Right, right. So yeah, we were just fucking with her. And, and But mm. we didn't know that she was feeding it out there like that. And that's how it got into the press. Right. The, a lot of people say the media made that term up, mm. but it was her. It was her, wow. single-handedly. And, and, and it, then once they heard it, that, that, it, that was going what yeah. was called back then, it was called now viral. Right. Like it, it, it made its way around. And we had the most press back then. Right. You know, for that right. period of time and, and what we were doing, nobody was getting more when press When you say we, us. rock steady. Rock steady, right. yeah. Right. yeah. So you were literally, like, let, let, let's just make, take it back to the beginning. You literally went on the first hip-hop tour? Yep. I went on, I went hold on. on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> let's make some noise for that. Yeah. Let's make some noise for that. Yeah. I'm sitting there and I'm like, wait the fuck a minute. So, because you gotta remember, everyone is thinking this is a fad at this time, right? Everything, yeah. Everyone is thinking that this is black people's and Puerto Rican people's version of rock and roll. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna be successful. It's gonna be just successful to them. But you guys went on, this was, this was not a world tour. This was the first tour, but it was in America, so, right? The, no, no, no. So here, there was okay. two tours. There okay. was one, oh, sorry. So we, the first curated hip hop show. Uh huh for the sake of presenting it to the downtown scene was curated by a man named Henry Chalfant. Okay. And a lot of people confuse the word graffiti rock with the Michael Holman show that was on TV with Run DMC versus Treacherous 3. Whoa. Yeah, whoa. so okay. graffiti rock was a curated show at a place called uh, the Kitchen Center for Performing Arts in maybe 1980. Wow. That's a couple of years before the graffiti rock show on TV. Huh. And... Uh, Henry Chalfant had got T-Kid as a graffiti writer to do the backdrop. Rocksteady crew, we split ourselves up to perform a battle as uh -huh. two different crews. And then you have Fat Five Freddy, uh, DJ Spy, and this dude named DJ Spy and Ramelzi, right. who weren't supposed to be there. Mm. And I found out some dirt. What, shall, what? shall I air it out? Yeah, go ahead. Whatever you want. <laughs> Whatever you want. Henry Chalfant told me that. Well, I talked to Fat Five. I talked to Fat Five Freddy, and I was trying to get like Cold Crush or Fantastic. Mm. So Fred injected himself and his boys. And he became the MC, and that's right? how he got yeah. his yes. thing in wow. terms of being a performer in the scene. Let's make some noise for Fat <laughs> Five Freddy. <laughs> The first swindle. Right, right. <laughs> so, 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 when you say the the the, the two first tours, so you okay, say, yeah. Okay. So that was so the kitchen after that um, had a twelve city tour. Okay. So it was myself, Frosty Freeze, Fat Five Freddy, DJ Spy, and then it was just like a collective of like uh, jazz and right. rock and punk uh, artists right. going on a twelve city tour between the states, Midwest and right. Canada, and and then after. Um, after that, we started performing regularly uh, downtown. So the first curated club events right. for hip hop 
presented to the masses and being covered by like the Village Voice, New York Times, Daily News, all that and, stuff. And can was, just start interject, but to be clear, there's no MCs. There's nobody rapping on this tour, is there? Uh, yeah. Who yeah, was? Yeah. Oh, well, you're talking about the Kitchen tour? Yeah, the first. Yeah, that was Fat Five Freddy. He oh, was wow. actually rhyming? I Kinda. thought he was just like hosting, yeah. MCing yeah. as a host. I- I'm just going to say uh, we were high a lot on that one. So <laughs> right. I don't really remember. Right. 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 <laughs> but um, yeah, so, you know, he was a master of ceremonies and dropping a little rhy- some rhymes. Huh. Um, and then this guy, DJ Spy, was, uh, he was really dope. He's from Brooklyn. He was rocking out on the turntables. And then shortly after that, we started doing shows in the downtown scene, the first downtown club to ever have a hip-hop curated show, at, besides the kitchen, because the kitchen was a, a like a, an art center. Right. Um, was a, it was a place called <coughs> Negril. 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 Then it went I, got, to, I got my notes, baby! Yeah. I got my notes! See, let me look, tell you something. Look, Some, I ain't gonna lie, you, you're still in my interview. Because look, I, I was about to say, this is one of my questions. But wait, before, before you Negril say that. Night but wait, wait, club, no, no, wait, wait. Before you get but to I Negril. told people, because somebody was like, yo, but does Nori know his shit? I'm like, yo, Nori's good. <laughs> yes, 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 Nori's good. good. Look, that, that's in my, well, my list. It says, Negril Nightclub considered to be hip hop's first nightclub. Is that the truth? I wouldn't say that. I would okay. say in terms okay. of presenting hip hop to the downtown scene. Right. Yeah. Downtown. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause yeah. Cause, cause um, they, I, yeah. T connection, okay. Audubon ballroom, ecstasy garage. But that's in the Bronx. All, yeah. All okay. the stuff up in, okay. uh, and then Harlem world. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Places but, I but used to go uptown. to. The, yeah, way, so, the way that you're saying all this, it makes me feel like the dancers and the graffiti artists and the DJs were more in the forefront at this point. Definitely. Easily. Okay. Yeah. Let, let me, look, cause I don't want to get back to this subject, but <clears throat> bear with me if, if you can, right? We know the five elements, right, of, of hip-hop, right? Then hip-hop starts to change, right? You get, get these corporations, they come in, some get Well, the down music with of them. hip-hop is extracted S- Some get down with them, some right. don't. But this was about maybe 10 years ago. Me and Capone, we go to Europe. And I forget <laughs> where we're at in Europe. I told this story. You always say Dusseldorf. No, no, no. Dusseldorf, <laughs> Germany. I love Dusseldorf, Germany. <laughs> but I remember me going on the tour. And I remember before we went on the tour, the promoters would just disappear. And they would come back and they would smell like old school Krylons. Yeah. I'm sorry for y'all youngins in here. Spray can. Yeah. And then they would be out there and they would have the cardboard. And I would, I would be like, did they do that just for us? And this was something that they did at their hip hop clubs every and this was this was this, it wasn't that long ago. But why is it abroad people wanna embrace the hip hop and the elements more than we do is right here create it? That's a deep question, man. I'm sorry. Now it's time for me. I, I, I think, drink. I think. Now, I, now no, 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 I got you. That was a deep I, question I, I think, right there. I felt good about myself. I'm sorry. I think because <laughs> of it being very regional and like our New York hip hop state of mind, the way we came right. up and, and how we presented all the elements, a lot of people who got it later on in the States only got rap. So they right. don't feel any kind of real alliance to right. the elements of hip hop. And right. even when you say five elements of hip hop, be, you know, originally it was, uh, you know, breaking de- uh, DJ and MCing, graffiti, and beatboxing. Wow. And then Bambada changed it to knowledge, knowledge instead of, of yeah. beatboxing, which I thought was unfair. I say just add the sixth one, you yeah, know? Yeah, might as well. Yeah, yeah. It should yeah. be the sixth Because, one. yeah, so that, and that happened like early 90s mm. when they changed it. Yo, but why does it? Why does the pure essence of hip hop live in other places other than? than it's America? more appreciated. More, is, that, is that the word I should be using? Uh, yeah, it's okay. definitely more appreciated. I, I, I think. I think. Maybe it's a two part question. No, no, have, you, have you have you experienced? Yeah, like, of being course. out there. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. a bittersweet, right? It's like, yeah. damn, I like that. But then it's like, why do you do that at home? <laughs> it's like my beef with love and hip hop. Like I said, it's uh-huh. not like they represent hip hop. No, not at all. The culture. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying at all? And that's the thing here in the states. The word hip hop is just it's rap music. By the way, this, I think this is the most hip hop conversation we ever had on the show right now. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Make some fucking noise. <laughs> hip hop shit. So I, I, here's the thing. I'm getting goosebumps. Okay. When we live it, I think we take it for granted. Okay. Especially when it comes from people like us. All right. And when people outside got a lot of corny shit to live through, right. you know, I I don't think they go through the same kind of pain. They embrace and. Right. 
they do the theatric. I think it's more theatrical. Like it's even like with with dudes who 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 spit rhymes but never shot a gun and they're talking about shooting guns yep. or never been in no real beef. Yep. Like know, emulating. It's, all, it's theatrical. Right. Like, you know, for me, I know what it's like to be shot at and to pull a trigger and I'm not trying to celebrate that right. shit, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So with a lot of people, they think it's just like theatrics. They're trying to put on this persona because they think it's so cool, but it's like, yo, my dude, like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna go out there and you're gonna dance and you're gonna try to look like a hard rock, right. You know, you ain't really being you, cause you didn't. You didn't have to live defending yourself, worry about being fighting people every week. But but that part was confusing to me growing up. CMB Street, I was scared of you. <laughs> oh, we were wild back like, then. No, 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 no. I'm talking about literally, cause the way you approached Lee, like Lee, I related to Lee, and then the way you was just looking at him, I was like, this dude right here is gonna hurt somebody. Like it, it looked like, it looked like. How could you not like? Obviously, I'm young. I'm looking at the time, yeah. and to me, b boying was gangster. Like, it, I mean, wasn't it made to diffuse real? No, beef? No, no, that's no. some bullshit yeah. that oh, yeah? New York City Breakers made up. Oh, okay, so, yeah, that's, that's the other crew, that, right? That, that's yeah. The other crew. So they, they used said to be that. Four masters. That, yeah, they were. Uh, damn, you killing uh, me, bro. You know, you sick. Come on. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, baby. Go so. On. Mm -hmm. The thing is, uh, they did it, they did that that show that that's incredible, uh -huh. and I think Michael Holman was kind of like mm -hmm. steering the narrative when they, when they were talking. I'm guessing I could be wrong, but um, look, the dudes that 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 put me in rock steady, they were straight up stick up kids, and, and one of them, you know, he's doing a life bid, and, and he, his name rings bells in the system, mm -hmm. uh. you know, and. and um, but they were notorious in the Bronx. These yeah. are the kind of dudes that when they're rolling up to a jam and Cold Crush sees them and whoever right. sees them, they're like, yo, what's up? And like, they're giving them that love. So right. shout out to Jimmy D and Jimmy Lee. Right. You know, those, those, those are the um, creators of Rock Steady. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jimmy yeah. D and Jimmy but, I got that on my notes too. But they were, they were notorious. They, wow. kids. Were they from 183rd? Yeah, and, 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 uh, and they used to hang around 183rd and Davidson. Um, oh, not and Creston, Creston. Oh, Creston. Sorry. Okay, okay. Which, if you went to 183rd and Creston back in this late 70s, you were a stick up kid, talented, connected, or stupid. Because <laughs> you, you know, you're not going there yeah. and, and, and leaving without getting stuck up. It's right. like when you went to the Disco Fever. Right. You went to the Disco Fever. It ain't like, you know, I know everyone talks about how great it was in there in the yeah. secret room behind the curtain where everyone's sniffing coke, but uh, in order to get through that block, uh, you're literally putting yourself on the line, getting stuck up. And thankfully, uh, I never got stuck up, but right. I went up in there, you know? All right. God damn it. Make some noise. You never get stuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but we was always, we were also doing stick ups. <laughs> right. Because that's, that's, that's what um, I'm watching a documentary and you, you kept, you kept, uh, Reiterating that you lived a double life, like you guys yeah. lived a double life. On one, on one hand, you guys would do a Letterman, do a movie, do uh, you know this, and and then on the other hand, be actually sticking up. I think they said that you filmed a, a, a scene in Central Park, like at the same place where you used to stick people. Yeah, up we did an anti we did an anti drug commercial with <laughs> Curtis Blow. Wait up. Wait we up, were high. Up. <laughs> doing the thing. I was talking about time how you go to bed. Wait up. Wait up. I didn't know that part. Wait up. You yeah, did, that's you, what it was. You did an anti-drug commercial high. Yeah, in, in Central in Park. In the same place you used to rob people at yes. Central Park. Oh, and it was, uh, it was directed by the dude from the Chicago 7. What's his name? They did the, the, commercial, uh, the, the, the film on him. God, legendary leader of the Chicago 7 at, mm. for, for rights. Right. But, uh, yeah, so... Right. Yeah, we did, a, I mean, uh, in uh, Beach Street, right. battle scene. Yeah, yeah crazy. most of us were... Which, are, are, are legendary shit. No, are you talking about the battle scene... At the, the Roxy. Train. Uh, that was the Roxy? I thought, yeah. I thought y'all was on a train. Oh, no, there was a train and then there's a club scene. Oh, no, that's a different one. But in okay. the club scene, okay. again, most of us were like on acid. That's why I can't. I don't know why I can't imagine y'all on acid. Bro. Because everyone thinks because we dance. No, 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 I just think. I think no. I think a different drug of anything. But not, acid know, is acid, cool, man. Acid is just a different mix. <laughs> bro, y'all must have been tripping crazy. Man, but that. But the. Cool it was the paper acid, right? Because they got different well, acid nowadays. Well, yeah. multiple ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got different acid nowadays. But the thing Ask about, Diego. You understand? Like, <laughs> I just walking around. I just. For us around. back then, we didn't brag about dirt. Right. Uh -huh. There was no such thing as like snitching on yourself like it is now on records. Right. Right. right, right, you know, right. so you, you you didn't do that. You just you did your dirt and you you shut up. You right. take shit to the grave. Right. 
like. Yeah, I, I'm definitely taking a lot of shit. No, to the I'm not gonna lie to you. When y'all, when y'all, when I see, when I see y'all, <laughs> yeah, it's time for your Japanese whiskey. You wanna take some Japanese whiskey? Yeah, we gonna do it. Let's no, do it. Let's no, do it. Let's do it. So I'm, I'm so, but I'm not gonna lie to you. There's nobody in the world that could have convinced me that that wasn't real. Like when y'all walked by each other, oh, like this, 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 I kid you not. Like I didn't know what cinematography was. Right. I didn't know. Oh yeah. You felt like it was like a documentary reality. By thing, the way, right? I know for a fact that was y'all raw job. I know that they, that oh, they yeah, could no, not that was dress y'all. Yeah, yeah, my yeah, mom they couldn't dress y'all. Yeah, I know, yeah, I know yeah. that. I know that now from knowing. But but back then, me looking at that scene, I could not tell you. I could not tell you if y'all was acting. You know, here's a funny thing. We wore our, well, I think most of us wore most of our own gear. I think New York right. City Breakers kind of wore a lot of the, the, the Puma stuff uh -huh. because they were like the main group in, in the, uh, the film. Right. But uh, yeah, I mean, right. you know, we had to show up with our own shit. Uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of shit that they were putting out was corny. So right. we weren't trying to look like, like, and thankfully, we didn't end up looking like the breaking movies where they're wearing right. fluorescent clothing and all that other stuff. Right. It was that, you know, you couldn't walk through that like that in the hood. Yeah. Unless you were like a Madonna fan female, you know? <laughs> I wasn't ready. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> and um, one of the things that I, I, I hear you frequently say is, is you said that it was kind of, you kind of stopped battling at one point because these guys were actually using your moves and using it against you. How, how, how could that feel? At first, so uh, my dude, Jerry Fontanez, I was talking to him one day. He was like, yo, rock steady for the 90s, rock steady for the 90s. And, and, and you know, I was always thinking like, yo, what are we going to do, battle people who are doing our moves against us? <laughs> right, right. But, and, and I was kind of upset with that. But then he was like, yo, my dude, like, you got to look at it like this. You created something that people are doing around the world. Right. And, and in the hood, we thinking like, yo, you biting my shit. Like, yo, what's up? Right. And, and I, I, I didn't, Instead of being I, flattered by it. Yeah, I right. didn't know how to be flattered by it right. yet. And then at that point, I was like, all right, cool. But in the Bronx, we had way more advanced moves than other people in other boroughs. So right. when I was going to these other boroughs and they saw me do what I was doing, they were definitely stealing... Right. I don't want to say my shit because there was other people before me. Right. And I, don't, I never want to, like, take credit away from them. But they took a lot of the Bronx style. And, right. and then, you know, some people got it, some people didn't. But you, you don't get to be number one without some whack motherfuckers around. Of course. Mm. Of you course. Know, you got to beat some people. Right. Flattery is what they say. Uh, flattery. <laughs> imitation is imitation, great. Imitation, imitation is flattery. flattery. But, yeah. to, like, to, you know, to be, to ask, like, a cliche question, like what Biggie, Biggie Small said. Did you ever thought that this would go this far? Like, like the culture, like this commercialization. Because remember, at one point, being commercial was whack. Yep. Like, if you like, almost, almost. Let me, let me, let me reiterate that. Not, a, not when we started though. It wasn't considered whack then. Okay, put us on. Because there was no industry for us. Right. There was only opportunity. Right. And, bro, look, my first show that I got paid, I got paid. Well, no, nah, second show I got paid anything substantial. Right. I got paid fifty dollars. Right. And it was that, that show at Negril. And when I got that $50, you know, I grew up poor. Right. So, like, like by the time I was 18, I had 10 different home addresses. Right. And, right. and so, when I had that $50 and I was able to go from my school across the street to the diner right. and get my own meal for the first time in my life. Wow. wow. That, you know, growing up in poverty, domestic right. violence, dysfunction, all that shit. That shit was everything to me. And, and not only that, it was the, like, uh, we're all love to all my people from the Bronx, but it was considered the burnt down Bronx. Yeah, at that yeah, time. the boogie down Bronx. My man Frosty right. Freeze always used to call us, call us the boogie down burn Bronx, burn down Bronx. Right. Yo, you know, there's, there's nice. You, it's, how, when the last time you've been in the Bronx? I've been around. I there's, go often. There's like, a, there's like a park. It's so beautiful. I'm like, oh my yeah. God, I forget where it's at. It's like, uh, 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 uh is it Pelham? Oh man, I looked. I was like, they, 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 they fooling people. This is still yeah, the Bronx. Yeah. But but it, I, I didn't think the Bronx would be gentrified. It's stubborn, right? It's definitely stubborn. It's, right. it's probably like one of the slowest moving uh, paces out of any gentrification in the world, right? And, and you live in Puerto Rico now? I have a place in Puerto Rico, and I also stay oh, in... I have a place. Okay, all right, my bad. Yeah. Let's make some That was a flow. That was a flow. That was a flow. You, you know what's crazy? I recently... Um, 
because I had too much responsibilities in Puerto Rico at one point, like just just being out there trying to make the music. And I just, but I recently just went out there and I fell back in love with Puerto Rico like this. As soon as you, as soon as, and uh, what, what was going on with the Puerto Rico relief? That I, yeah, the initiative. Uh, so you and Fat Joe. Yeah. Oh, well, oh wow. <laughs> okay. It, it's crazy because there's certain things I, I can't talk about that because we found loopholes in terms of how to get supplies legally into uh, uh, into Puerto Rico. Okay. Legally. All right. But. You know, the system would change if we, if I talked about it, and right. they probably put a block. Because there's a lot of political right. roadblocks to get. Man, this right. is bullshit. It's all about money. But you know, I, I've always felt like, number one, if I, I felt like if I was going to contribute to any kind of tax uh, uh, environment, I'd rather buy something in Puerto Rico. Started with that. Mm -hmm. I ended up realizing that okay, well, there's a lot of dysfunction within Puerto Rican history because of colonization, and if there's something that I could do to help people move forward. Right. Let me do it. But then you have, it's, it's in the line of disasters, you know, hurricanes and all that right. stuff. And, you know, growing up poor and seeing my people struggle, mm -hmm. that, that hit me hard. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I went down there. Red Bull helped me out to uh, go on, you know, get a couple of private planes of supplies mm -hmm. to go down so there. I helped bring water, right? Yeah, well, I, I did water filtration systems with an uh, organization called Waves for Water, where we enabled uh, 200,000 people to have access to turning their water into clean water. Right. This is when Trump was throwing the um, paper yes. towels. Yes, 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 yes. And then, you know, earthquakes. I mean, we've, we've raised a lot of money. We've hey, Puerto Rico farmers. had an earthquake, too? Huh? Puerto Rico had an earthquake, too? Yeah, yeah. That was in between Fiona and Maria. Get the Damn. fuck out of here. And that's crazy. Now, here's the wild shit. Right. Yeah, so when you go in, into an earthquake... Where's your Japanese whiskey? We don't see it. I don't know. Where's your ass? Oh, oh, yeah, he will. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so... Yeah, it, Wait, it, it had an earthquake? Yeah, there was an earthquake. And, and here's the crazy shit. It's like, oh you could grow up in the hood uh -huh. and feel threatened and get something to protect yourself. Right. But when you're going into a ground zero of an earthquake situation, wow. I don't care how hard you are, mm -hmm. what you've been through, you have no defense. Right. right. And you know you're driving right to ground zero. And you got to make the choice. Like, all right, well, this is how I die. All right. And the, but the bigger picture is somebody got to go there. Right. And those are the choices we make when we go into disaster areas. Like, I could die today, and I'm okay with that. And you're saying Puerto Rico was considered a disaster area at that time? Yeah, every time there's yeah, a Yeah, all these earthquake. natural, yeah, they're crazy disasters. Yeah, so why, like, you That's know. That's why we're so resilient. Yeah, this, is, this is what's crazy, right? We're, it's considered American property? Colony. Colony? Colony, yeah. It, but we have. Technically, Puerto Rico. Not is a state. Un, technically, Puerto Rico is under military rule. Meaning? Meaning it was taken by force. During the Spanish-American War. Right. After the, the Spanish left, in about, like, eight days, the yeah. United States said... Is that why Louisa... Yeah. Louisa yeah. is black pe blacker people than me and Louisa? No, Puerto Ricans, Puerto Ricans were originally black, bro. That's right. Yeah. God damn it, talk that talk. Yeah. Talk that talk, God damn it. <laughs> talk that talk, God damn it. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh -huh. it's, you know Tainos, right. dark skin, Right. You know, and it's, I mean, it's the reason why my hair, when my hair grows, my hair grows into an afro. Right. No product needed. Right. You know? Right. Yes. And, and, but that's, that's in us. So, um, you know, like when, even when people talk about the debate of, like, Puerto Ricans and hip-hop and all no, that, that You know, stuff, no, that's where I was going. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. Fat I mean, Joe. We can Fat get Joe has said, um, hold on, let's, let's salute you. Yeah, cheers, cheers. Give me you your flowers, you man. Too, right? Give me your flowers, yeah. motherfucker. Make some noise yeah. for crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, that Japanese you and Fat Joe, um, I'm 45. Joe is, I think, a couple years in. I think you're like 10 years. I'm 57. Uh, 57, okay. Yeah. So what's that? Joe's like four years, years younger than me. 12 years, 10 okay. Years. Well, I'm 47. So for those that don't know, not only were, you know, Puerto Ricans involved with the making of the music and, and the throwing of the jams mm -hmm. when it comes to how people and got together. And there was a couple of Latinos. There might have been some Cubans but there, too. Yeah. In <laughs> every element of hip-hop. Like, because, you know, it's fucked up. Just go for it, bro. Go I just for it. Because I, I, <laughs> kids nowadays think hip-hop started with Biggie and Tupac. And what's fucked up is they don't go back in their research. But... They'll have on a pair of Jordans where he didn't play 40 years ago. Right. How the fuck you making money off of this and you don't know your history, but you know Jordans? 
Jordan ain't give not one of us a free pair of shit. But this is our mental colonization, man. Let's just talk the talk, <laughs> goddamn. Come on, let's talk. Let's Look, get to it. You know, when it comes to like people trying to figure out the history or the anniversary date of hip hop, which mm. is mad suspect. Right. That that oh. date, the year is suspect. It's as like fuck. Christmas. Like, like it, nobody it pretty, really knows it, what Christmas yeah, is. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. Right. It's exactly right. like that. <laughs> and and the thing is that people have gotten so comfortable with. A, a, a narrative or the romanticizing of a, t a particular story or perspective that they're taking that as absolute. Right. But there's enough data out there to cross-reference and be like, well, geographically, time, uh, it's just impossible for certain things to have happened. Mm. And if you're looking at a flyer and then another person on that same flyer that says, I didn't even know him that year. How am I, how am I on this flyer? This flyer's fake. Mm. Ooh. So there's doctored flyers to to make up the history of hip hop. I'm gonna say it right now. Fuck yeah. Wow. Oh, shit. Yeah, there is. Wow. But I do understand that we have to come to uh, to a consensus where it's like, all right, well, we gotta celebrate something at some point. But it, but it just shouldn't be based off of a comfortable lie, because if you're looking at all the archives that are being acquired by Cornell, Harvard, Columbia. uh, and all these Columbia. places. When they start cross-referencing, they're going to be like, ooh, that's a lie. That's right. a lie. This person lived here at this point. He went to that school and all this right. other stuff. And then even on the Puerto Rican and, and black thing, it's like if you're looking at Disco Mario, this guy uh, Tex Hollywood, I believe his name is, mm -hmm. and Kool Herc being those absolute first DJs. Right. Look, if you were back down back then, no one would know you're Latino and there would be no right. reason for them to know you're Latino because right. we just lived amongst each yes. other. Yeah. Your problem is yeah. my problem. When right. we get pulled by the cops, we're getting pulled together in the Bronx. Right. So right. it doesn't matter whether you're black, Puerto Rican or whatever. Right. So right. for you, your background is what? I'm black and Puerto Rican. Okay, yes. so never had no need to say that back then. Right. No, I used to call so myself a nigga Rican, about but... Let's go King Mario, black and Puerto Rican. Right. Tax Hollywood, Puerto Rican, mm -hmm. but they look like you. Mm -hmm. And, right. and that's the thing that a lot of people who grow up in areas that are segregated don't understand. In New York, we're stacked up on each other. We, we lock arms with each other. You know, you protesting, I'm protesting with you. All right. All right. And, and a lot of places aren't unified. It's one like community. I, I heard you say something real, real um, important. You said, if you was to take away, I think you said Puerto Ricans. So if you take away Puerto Ricans in hip hop. It, it, if you take away Joe Conzo's photos. All right. That's, okay. In hip hop, okay. the whole story of hip hop becomes very difficult to tell because he's the first one, and he's from within the hip hop community right. to actually document what he was doing. Uh, you right. know, what, just the environment. And he was a little chubby kid. I didn't even know him back then, but right. he just picked up a camera and started documenting. And if it, if you removed all of Joe Conzo's photos, mm -hmm. everything that we look at as iconic photos from the '70s, they'd be all gone. Because there's no one else. I think the reason why people even uh, dispute this debate is because... Because they stupid. <laughs> <laughs> because, look, they either young, yeah. stupid, divisionist, or don't come from our area and don't right. understand how black and Latinos in New York, we fucking roll different, yeah. man. Yes. We, we're not... I'm sorry. Like, to it, me, it wasn't separated. it's my brothers. I don't give a yeah. fuck. Yes. Like, I, we've never had to have this discussion. Right. Because it's like, yo, your beef is my beef. Let's go. But you can see how, like, a person from, uh, like, East Los Angeles. Yeah, Because they're so, they're so segregated, segregated in, in there. And then it's, like, places like Chicago as well, like, where it's nothing but Puerto Rico. Yeah. But still. Still segregated. It's still segregated. Like, yeah. when I go to, to, you know, where they got the flag? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. The, the yeah. metal flag? Yeah. I love to go there, but... I always remember, like, some of my black friends don't like it. Like, they'd be like, oh, yeah, but I'll even, stay in even, the hotel. Even and those like, segregated areas will tell you that historically hip hop was the thing to bring everybody together. Yes. Okay. Even yeah. in those areas, it was uh -huh. still happening. All right. Yeah. And, and you know, um, when you're looking at, like, look, I went along in the, in the 90s when I started to move around again, I, I went to San Diego and there was a sister in a gas station. I'm, I'm like, yeah, give me whatever, I'm pumped, whatever. Mm -hmm. And she looks at me like, where you from? And I'm like, what do you mean where I'm from? Because she, she can smell the New York on you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah she okay. goes, I, I say, I'm from New York. She goes, 
Because you don't sound like no Mexican. <laughs> yeah. Yo. I mean, that's what... That's, that's going to happen every like, Latino at some no, point. No, then she goes, you black? I'm like, I got that in me, but, uh, you know, Puerto Rican and we mix uh, like that. She and, didn't even and, know what a Puerto Rican was or this? No, she didn't okay. know what a Puerto no, Rican was. I don't know what a Cuban was, a Puerto Rican Yeah, was. no, I kid you not. If you pass, pass Virginia sometimes, it changes to... It's still Latinos, but it changes to a different type of Latino. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. And, and, you know, it's, it's crazy. But you know Dominicans is everywhere. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yo, know, I was in Switzerland, and they had a fucking Dominican restaurant. I said, holy moly guacamole. In Zurich, in Switzerland. And the price was crazy, Dominican right? Dominican set up anywhere, bro. I don't even think anybody in there was Dominican. They just had a Dominican restaurant. No, 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 you're Dominican. I was yeah. just playing around. Hey, you well, know, um, I want, before I forget, because mm -hmm. I wanted to just shout out, there's this organization um, called the Elijah Project in Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. And it's black and Latino owned, and, and you know we're, we're starting a huge initiative in Puerto Rico, uh -huh. uh, as well as areas in the United States where we're going to really reach out to uh, people in different communities of need and deliver furniture, appliances, all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff. And I also have a nice partnership with Amazon where okay. they're giving me budgets to find to source out people in desperate need wow. uh, as a result of disasters. And, and we're just you know no politics, no right. religion involved, just Humanity, like just helping people. So Humans I, helping I just you. want to give them some love. Oh, uh, yeah. Make yeah. Noise, yeah. yeah. Give me flowers. Give well, me crazy. Flowers. Yeah. We want you to know our show is about giving people their flowers. I had so much fun researching and, you know, getting into your life. And we wanted to personally, face to face, give you your flowers because you deserve it. Oh, shit. You know what I'm hey. There you go. That's it. He's going right over the bed. That's mm. right. <laughs> Right. Well, let me give you something then. Okay, cool. Let's go. I got something right here. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to throw on my glasses because I'm old. So my, <laughs> man, my man, Mayor 139, who's here, he was also in Star Wars. Okay. Oh, wow. Uh, Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. I met him earlier. So he is a, he's the one, actually, the person who designed the uh, BET Award as well. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. Well, right we haven't gotten it yet. Which we haven't gotten <laughs> We so, won it. and didn't get it. Didn't get it. See if I can open this right. Hopefully this pops off right. This is a little present for the show. Okay. Anything that comes in a case like that is I think, I think I'm the like first B-boy to represent B-boys and B-girls. Yes, that's right. Yes, yes. That's right. So to make sure there's always some B-boy... Vigo representation, and if you could tell me what I'm missing over here, what am I doing? You can come over here if you want. Yeah. Yeah, come over please, here. Please, please. Yeah. yeah, there's something that's supposed to jump off. Of. <laughs> but this is the uh, authenticity of it. Wow. wow. Oh. I believe that's your music for your show. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. Oh, shit. Oh, uh, shit. Oh. oh. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Make sure man. it don't I, wind I, up like our other award. Yeah, thank you for bringing them on. Yes, oh, no, thank no, you, thank come you, on. Man. It's an honor for us to have them on. Appreciate that. The diversity of the, yeah. night, of the culture and the language. And Absolutely. Oh, yeah. A lot of gems. I'm really appreciate it. I'm for years. Yes, hell oh, He's yeah. an original, too, nah, man. Nah, nah, thank yeah. you, brother. Thank he you very much. He was probably into hip... I don't know if he was into hip-hop before me, but maybe yeah. around the same time. No, then we didn't even call it hip-hop until, like, 82. And, and a lot of people don't understand. Can we just get into that? Yeah, so, so in, in 82... So how was Hip Hop 50 then? Because you're saying it's blended. Is it? Is it? <laughs> you just it it's it? 50 because, you know, some of the elders don't want to stir the waters, and I get it, but in 50 years from now, when we're all dead, what? some person's going to cross-reference cross and be like, this is wrong, this is off. So you're, so you're saying Hip Hop... 82, so what year? Put it this way, I'm gonna put it this way. Okay. The people on that, that first flyer, and a, a lot of people gonna be really upset with me for this. Oh, man. There are certain people <laughs> on that flyer who said, I didn't even know Ku Herc on th that day. I didn't meet Ku Herc until two years later. And that flyer only showed up 10 years ago. And what flyer is this? So we, the well, famous flyer that's posted It's supposed to be the first yeah. jam. Okay. Now, now, whose name is on this jam? DJ Clark Kent, the original Clark Kent. Okay. Uh, Timmy something, I forgot his name. Um, cool Herc. But Clark Kent didn't know Cool Herc until two years later, based on mm. what he said. Mm. He met him in 75. And, and there's a whole bunch of stuff. Like, you know, a lot of people think Cool Herc started breakbeats. No. It was a dude named... Wait, come on, man. Stop. No, 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 no. But here's the thing. Okay. I, I'll get to the good shit. Okay, okay. Uh, a, a guy named John Brown. 
That was his name. He used to DJ at a club, and Kool Herc went there. And I, I have Kool Herc's first interview. Mm -hmm. So I, I got the data. Right. I got the receipts. Uh -huh. So in there, he says he saw this dude named John Brown spin at this club in the Bronx, and then he was inspired. Uh -huh. Now, the thing is that, yeah, he inspired Herc, but Herc inspired the other people who really elevated and evolved everything in, into a different lane. Right. So I'm, I would never take anything away from Kool Herc's contribution, but I'm not going to embellish it. Right. And, and even without the embellishment, he's still cream of the crop when right. it comes to the music. So, because that's the one thing I feel like everyone in hip hop kind of agrees with that Cool Herc is the father. Not but the he golfer. wasn't called the father of hip hop until Bambada told everyone to stop calling himself the father of hip hop. He told people, yo, don't call Calling call me Bambada? The right. Every, we all used to call Bambada the father of hip hop. But why is that? If because Bambada is the one who corralled the streets, the hoods, and, and the, the black spades groups. and bringing out all this. Well, stuff. I mean, just in terms of, like, you know, if you if you threw uh, a, a Zulu Nation jam, you'll see Cold Chris performing. You'll see Treacherous Three, Soul Sonic Force. So Bam was bringing everyone together. Bam, you know, also celebrated the B Boys and the graffiti. Like writers. he made the elements come together to become he a culture. He didn't curate it like that, but everything was treated as one family. Right. You know, and. In, in, in the early 90s, Bam was like, yo, stop, you know, don't call me the father of hip hop. But he was inspired by Herc as a DJ. Right. So he want because he was inspired by Herc, he wanted to give Herc, Herc the ultimate hip hop thing, which is not fair because if you start taking apart the elements, graffiti, DJ, and breaking them scene, okay, who is his, his peers in each one that are gonna say the exact same thing about him being the father of every element? Right. It's not gonna happen. This is it's deep. impossible. I, but feel that's, like, I feel like we're talking about Socrates. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, in a sense, we are. <laughs> this is, no, yeah. and, and the thing is, is that when you're looking at people like um, Grandmaster Kaz, Melly Mel, uh, and, and different writers like Lee Quinones, Futura 2000, uh, Phase 2, uh -huh. those dudes are like the cool Herc's of their own element of right. hip-hop. Right, right. So when you say Cool Herc is the father of hip-hop, that diminishes the role of every leader from every other element of hip-hop. But no, I have, I've never really heard no one else say what you just said just now. Because they all don't they, like to stir the words. Because I talk shit. You know? I, you know, honestly, so I... You're saying they're saying it, but they're not saying it. They know it. I look, I've... Okay. I went to a meeting, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to throw any names out, because I love my brothers, man. Mm -hmm. But I went to a meeting where we were going to address... You cool. are a That's okay. Yeah, but have another drink. But, but, but... I'm still a leader. Right, 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 <laughs> right, right. So mm -hmm. there was a meeting where someone was sent to, uh, as Cool Herc's uh, representative, mm -hmm. and the question got to the point where, okay, did Cool Herc create hip hop? And this is someone that's Cool Herc's peer. And he was like, no. But am I gonna say that in public? No. And then he rightfully said, cause your motherfuckers are the ones who started calling him the father. You know, but we were told that by Bambada. So we didn't know better, you know? And, and even with that, it still doesn't take down Cool Herc and his influence, uh, uh, his impact on, 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 on the community that he served, you know? It's just that there are more pieces to the puzzle. Look, I could easily sit here and say, yo, I saved breaking two times, right. you know? But how can I do that without competition? All right. who, you, who am I battling to have saved it? All right. who's, number, who's the number one record you know, right. if there's no number two? All right. So I got to give credit to New York City Breakers and mm -hmm. Dynamic Rockers and mm -hmm. all the crews that, that I came up with, like from the Bronx Rockwell Association, the Bronx Boys, Star Child of Rock, all these crews that will never get mm -hmm. the attention because they never moved forward after that point. Right. But, but, but I'm still going to recognize them. Let, let's get some clarity on what you're saying, because you're saying Herc for the music. Yes. So are you saying that before that, obviously, the graffiti artists and, and the dancers, that was already happening? It, it was. I would say it was a genesis. Because look, because people say that Kirk came from Jamaica. Yep. And he was, that's like kind of how... Bringing the they, turntables like, together. Bringing the turntables That's together. a nice story. Right. <laughs> Oh my God! It's a company. You know, you know, no, no, no. If you're talking, if you're talking, oh my God! No, 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 here's I wasn't the thing. Ready. If you're talking sound systems and where he comes from and that coming from there, that, right? Yes, but was that already in New York? Which I've seen this argument Which, a lot, a lot. So I'll give you the data. Right. There's okay. a dude named uh, Cool DJ D, uh -huh. who was already in the parks. Cool DJ D was getting a, a new sound system. He sold his old sound system to Cool Herc. That's when Cool Herc came into the parks. 
The sound system that Ku Herc talks about what that he got from his father was a house system. That's why he could do the community centers. You couldn't bring that system out into the parks. It's gonna be like bringing a little box. Right. So Ku DJ D was that dude who was, he was already in parks. Mario was in the parks. There was a lot of people who were in the parks. Some people doing disco, and, and, and it wasn't as I would say curated in terms of music the way Ku Herc did, because Ku Herc is the one who curated that hip hop sound right. without a doubt and you and that but I mean, not specific to the breaks you're saying yes specific no, to the no, breaks. no but if, the way the party was being done from cool herc's perspective on changed it but his inspiration came from this different people and his sound system came from someone else as well so that meant that he wasn't the first in the parks right but even with that he doesn't he was still the first major influence on the larger body of people and that is fucking amazing. Right. And, and, and I can have my differences with the timelines and the inconsistent stories, mm -hmm. but I will never take away his flowers right. because he deserves those. They just don't need Absolutely. to be embellished. Right. right. Yeah. I didn't mean to bring you guys down. No, no, no. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's like I, I believe that's the first time I heard that. It's the first like, time for me as well. Like, even if I did hear it. Except it the was, part of the, of the turntables. Because I feel like the same way that people have been trying to take away the, the Puerto Rican Latino side of it, they've also been trying to take away the Jamaican influence on it. Right. So I feel like there's that argument going on. But here's already. the thing. I don't, I don't, and I, was, I wasn't there a couple of years before I started, so I don't know if Cool Herc was playing Jamaican music, but the only person I knew that was playing reggae was Bambada. He was playing Yellow Man. Oh, uh, God, I, I can't even think of all, all the artists right now, but... Bambada was the one who turned us on in hip hop to, to um, what would be considered rock steady. Right. You know, that style of, of reggae. Right. Holy shit, man. This, 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 I mean, this, this. the tapes are there. You can right. hear them. And that's, that's, and that's the good thing is that these tapes exist. Thankfully, Tape Master, rest in peace, he just passed away. And that's another brother. Uh -huh. We wouldn't have those musical references if Tape Master wasn't making those tapes back then. Did DJs do that sometimes? Yeah. But if there was a first industry, hip hop music industry, Tape Master was the dude. Mm. He was the first, I would say, mixtape king. Yeah, absolutely. So I heard you say that in your day, you would battle to get your name. But then now it's like in, in order for a person to secure their name, they don't battle. No, 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 no. What I said was, mm -hmm. in, or, in back in the days, in, if you you had to battle to protect your rep. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. These days, people avoid battles to protect their rep. Right. Right. Why? Yeah, I don't know. Like for me, if I heard you was like B boy whoever, and you live like 20 blocks away, I'm like 14. I'm rolling up on your block, like yo, you EFN? I don't know what you look like. Right. You EFN? Yeah, I ain't have word? Instagram back then. Uh, you, uh, uh, you break a word, you want to battle, we battle right there on the concrete, or we go find a hallway, something like that. Right, right. But that's what it was. I mean, everyone put their reps on the line. I mean, look, look at if you look at this dude, Gabriel Rosado, the boxer. Okay. His, his warrior status in the game, even when he doesn't win, I mean, he, he's still held in high regards. Right. Because he's a fucking warrior. He puts his name on the line. And, it, and even after he fights, his name is very well protected no matter what the outcome. Right. And that, that's what hip hop was built off of. And yeah. it's all we had, bro. Right. We were poor. Right. You know, the only thing you had was just like, you know, some props, you know, maybe mm. you meet some girls, something like mm. that. And that mm. was it. Jesus. It was, it was, it was, oh, no, no, no. The money came from stick ups. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was, it's a street culture from the get. Yeah. Because drug it, dealers were, were, were like backyard, right? Oh, uh, no, 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 no. No, no. We, no, we didn't do it like that. Um, okay. it, it was just like, and I'm not going to come in here like I was like the main dude in the streets or anything right. like that. Right. You know, we, we, you dance, you practice, you get hungry. They said you like, you was the only one that like, avoided jail a little bit. Huh? Everyone else went to jail, and you was like the only one that, like, should I have been in jail? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Multiple times, but I don't talk. Right. And, and that's just it. Like, I beat a case where I was ready to take the charge. You know, mm. I, I told my man just stand back. I'm taking everything. Mm. And, and I beat the case. So, you know, I bullshitted my way through that too. Mm. 
So, uh, hold on. Say no more. Oh, no, no, no. I got one more before quick time. Um, oh, yeah. <clears throat> so you invented the windmill, but yeah. you, you originally called it the backspin? The continue, uh, no. So there's two versions. There's just the backspin where you spin really fast. Okay. Which I called the whip backspin. And then the windmill, which was originally called the continuous backspin. When you, with the open legs? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that was all, I did that on like Cortona Avenue Cortona in the Bronx. Avenue. In, uh, in a hallway, just Originally practicing. you were trying not to fall or something. I was trying not to hit, my, you know, those two doorways, <laughs> slim hallways, tenement building. This is fucking amazing. I, I, and I want, I, I over-rotated and, and uh, I, I just was trying not to, you know, for the fast one, I tried not to hit the walls with my feet. Right. So I balled up and centrifugal force right. whipped me around and I, I started spinning real fast. Right. But yeah. I did that when I was maybe 13. Right. And, 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 and that was windmill, originally called the backspin. That was, a, yeah, the backspin, the whip backspin, because your leg whips around and forces you to spin fast. So when did it become the windmill? Oh. The windmill, uh, probably around uh, maybe within that same year. Uh, I actually called it the continuous, but since we were, after a while, we were already traveling uh, uh, years later, and people didn't know the names of these moves because right. more people were starting to break again. Mm -hmm. So names changed because people don't know. Right. We're not hanging out with every crew. Right. We only hung out with our own crew. Right. And at that point, I had, I was a uh, rock steady crew, like 500 deep. Right. But it was stick up kids, DJs, B boys, DJs, MCs, hangout crew, right. writers, all that stuff. We roll thick, man. Do you realize that that's a rite of passage? Like, if anybody's a dancer, if anybody really wants to take themselves real, it's like, I think you got to learn, I got to know the windmill. <laughs> like, yeah, I no, I, I just, I'm just being Any b-boy yeah, uh, has no, to. No, 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 I'm saying dancing overall. B-boying, oh, sure. Rough, rough. But dancing overall, it's like, you have to know the windmill, the moon, yeah, the it's moon a foundational walk, move. The moonwalk. And it's like one other dance. So, so the, there's, what, out of the three dances, pop and lock and break and, mm. you know, um, and then, I mean, some people in New York side call electric boogie, mm -hmm. which is a, a wrong version of popping and locking mixed together. Right. It's like mixing salsa and merengue together. I like it. I <laughs> so like people, it. <laughs> people call it, no, but I mean mixing the dance steps, which mm -hmm. is two different rhythms. Two different rhythms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so you can't do that. So right. a lot of people don't know the history, don't know that popping and locking are two different dances the same right. way salsa, mambo and, and merengue. Right, right. Popping so, and locking, pops, two different things. Two, yeah, so one's popping, one's locking. Right. And how do those two relate to what you guys were doing? Uh, that, that's West Coast stuff, and... The robot, that's West Coast stuff, right? Yeah, robot, pop and lock. Yeah, yeah uh, uh, the that robot. was uh, the electric boogaloos and the lockers right. would be were the ones who were on Soul Train. Right. And we on the East Coast used to watch Soul Train, and a lot of people try to show up in a club. A lot of the girls back then right. would try to do a lot of moves from Soul Train. Right. Just for, like, like the social dance aspect yeah. of it. Right. You know what's funny? I was watching, right, and... Because I, obviously, I'm, I'm a little younger, so I don't remember ever anybody not ever being a, a, a break-in on anything but a cardboard. We started that. I, I know. I got, <laughs> I, got, I, got, I, got, I got your story. I got your story. <laughs> but there's a part that I'm watching, uh, and you said that you were doing it at first on the rubber mats under yep. the swing. Yep. So when I was saying that, I was on the phone with somebody. I was like, yo, he just said that he started doing this shit on the rubber mats. And I'm realizing I'm speaking to a, a, my friend from the West Coast. He can't relate at all. He's like rubber mats. I'm like, you guys uh, never had swings? Uh, and he's like, <laughs> it was sand or dirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I didn't know on the I West mean, Coast. I mean, out here down south. They had sand. I, I mean, I was, I, I, when I was a kid in L.A. too. That's what's funny. Like, we I'm, had the I'm least protective to, surface. Yeah, I'm listening, <laughs> I'm listening to a West Coast guy. And I'm listening to a South guy. And I'm like, yo, I just heard Crazy Legs say, that if they wasn't on concrete, the safest thing they was to do was on the rubber mats. Yeah. And both of them was like, what rubber mats? And I'm like, <laughs> y'all didn't have rubber mats? And they're like, by the swings? By the park? Y'all didn't have rubber mats? No one, this is a New York City thing. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. Yeah. I thought the whole world had fucking rubber mats. Nah. Yeah. So, but describe to people, because I also heard you say that you actually used to do it raw on a on a on a, on a cement. On a yeah, we we started breaking on concrete, definitely. 
How was we were bloody, blisters. We were, we were bloody b boys. Blisters. Y'all look like y'all was lifting cement bricks moves, all day. Yeah, well, yeah. Yes. Since okay. the moves were new and not mastered yet, we'd have scrapes on our on our lower back. Yes, heard you say that. So yeah, there was a lot of uh, a lot of blood at the beginning of breaking. Wow. Yeah. So who's okay? Whose idea was like, yo, let's go get the car, boy? So. On 98th Street in Amsterdam in New York, there's a, a, a park there which is now known as Rocksteady Park. Hold on, but which is brilliant, by the way. They fucking went and got cardboard. I, 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 let me, I let me, and let me. I don't know who was the first one to do it. It was one of my okay. guys. So okay. there's, right next to the park, there used to be an appliance store. So mm -hmm. in between the park and the appliance store was an alley where they would put all their trash, trash. cardboard. Yes. And then next door to that was a 99 cent store. So we would what? go there, steal steal tape, and then we go <laughs> take climb over the fence, pull cardboard, because we wanted to keep our gear fresh. Right. Oh, I mean, so that's what the cardboard was for. Yeah, yeah. It was to not fuck up your gear, not yeah, to and be so we safe. Could spin. Okay, 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 yeah. okay, okay. So we wanted to stay fresh. I mean, we didn't have much clothing to really just jump. Right. Be like, yo, fuck I got my practice clothes and right. you know right. my hangout clothes. So we would just set up. And, and do that, and, and uh, I'll send you some images if you need it for the show. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, please, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. no. I ain't gonna lie, like me being from New York City, it's like it's a proud moment for us, like mm -hmm. to see people come together. Like I didn't even know what we were doing. Like I would go to, because you know, from Left Rack City, so I would go to USA Skating Ring. But I know you got, a, I got a story about that. I would go up there, and the, it was like I didn't know it was a cool club. At least at that time. And the people who wouldn't be able to get in there to go skating or whatever, they would stay outside with the car boys. But these was like the guys like That means they didn't have like six dollars or three dollars. Yeah, they going. or they ain't had no juice. Either <laughs> yeah, or, yeah. either or they like like they, and I would sit out. Baby J was a DJ. Mm. So, so I would uh you know go there and, and but I didn't know that was like a technique. I didn't really know, like I didn't know, like I, I just would see this and this would be something like like I said, I'm, I'm 45 years old, so hip-hop is older than me. I, I have that in the rhyme. Hip-hop is older than me. I listen to it in my stroller because I don't remember... Yeah. I can't remember where hip-hop didn't exist. Right. You're old enough to remember the time. Yeah. I, 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 and it's funny because, uh, like, as much as people call me a pioneer, like, mm -hmm. and the, people try to separate generation, this generation, that generation, and still don't fucking know the diff definition <laughs> of a generation, right. you know? Right. But, you know, I started in 77. So right. if in my, in the way I look at history, I would say hip hop started in 75. Okay, you From know, your perspective. Because so most of the people mm. um, who can collaborate, uh, uh, what's the name, what's the word? Uh, corroborate, so hip hop corroborate, corroborate, right, corroborate. Right, stories. Corroborate. Most of the stories are 75. Okay. You don't, so you're saying so hip-hop is age, 47, so 75. and we just rounded it off to the nearest 10. I think so. I think, okay. But I think that's still fair. That's still hip-hop, though. Yeah, yeah. Rounding yeah, it off yeah, is yeah. still hip-hop. I mean, that's some hip-hop I thought you, th you would have thought it was older. Think you think it. it's younger. Though. I think it's younger by two years. Okay. Yeah. But I'm cool with settling, but I'm also... Uh, understanding that somebody's gonna change that shit in the future when we're not around, All right, right. and no emotions are involved. All right. right, right. You know, they're just looking at times, and and, and data, and location, right. and possibilities. Right. But uh, um, yeah, so if I, I started in '77, and w and when people say like, "Oh, Latinos weren't there," I'm like, "All right, well, how long did it take to create before we got in?" My brother was the first person I saw breaking right. with DJ Africa Islam. Right. I was in 76. My Africa brother was Islam. my oh, brother was yeah. a member of the organization which became Zulu Nation. Wow. So this is before it was my, Mighty Zulu Nation. Right. So it's like when they talk about Latinos weren't there, I'm like, my brother was a ca card carrying member right. of the organization. Right. So, and then Disco Mario, like Cool Herc's peers, if you're talking about those three being the main three. Two out of three are Latino. I know, I think I kind of asked this earlier, but why do you think they're trying to take that out? I, I think they don't, I think uh, they don't understand, like, like from my perspective, everyone in here mm -hmm. is my brother. Right. And, and, and right. from a New York perspective, that's how we rock. And if right. you grow up in those areas that have you living in different communities, right. it's going to be different for them. Right. And a lot of those different communities, if you have a Latin community here and they're not associated with, associated with anything hip hop, there's probably gonna be a lot of Latin music there. Right. You know? But at the same time, 
we have our own struggles within the Latino community because if we're not into salsa, if you don't do a song and you don't drop Spanish in it, right. that dark, diehard Latino community isn't going to really see you as theirs anyway. Right. Trust you me. probably Trust got me. more props for dropping Spanish. Yeah. Right. Well, that's oh, why you, I you, left originally. Yes, yes. <laughs> Trust me, I remember. It, it changed the game, <laughs> though, right? Yes, yes, it changed yes. the game. So, yeah. But I think a lot of people uh, have a hard time because when you do look at those early images and there are dark-skinned brothers there, and you don't know they're Puerto Rican also because right. we didn't have to talk about it. Right. And you don't, then, you don't see they And tell. then, check this shit yeah. out. Then there are people who are Latino that didn't know they were Latino. Mm -hmm. Wow. So Graham makes a DST. Uh. First person to win a Grammy in hip-hop because of the, 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 uh, what he did with Herbie Hancock on Rocket. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. He found out three years ago, he calls me up like, your legs, we got to go to Puerto Rico. I'm like, what? Yo, <laughs> found out I'm a love child. My father's from Ponce, Puerto Rico. Okay. So that means... Make some noise for Puerto Rico. So, yeah. Make some noise for Puerto Rico. So that means the first person to win a Grammy in hip-hop is black and Puerto Rican. God damn, make some noise for me, God damn. Yeah. That's there you go. I'm black and Puerto Rican. All right, hold on, I'm going to use the bathroom real quick. Y'all can keep going. Y'all yeah. keep going. Okay. Yeah, if you got to use the bathroom, you just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No I'm going to use the same glasses. Too, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's yeah. go, let's go. I'm going to use it too. Take it. That's me, kill him. Tequila, scotch, bourbon. Yo, no, that, that, now that's some real drinking shit right there. I gotta salute my hat to you. All right, are we doing a quick time of slime, right? Let's go, let's okay, go. cool. Oh, I, let me I'm pour, set it pour off. Pour your shots light. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair pour. warning, fair warning. Yeah. Thank, thankfully, I'm in walking distance yes. to my room. Yes. Uh, you want, uh, oh, you want to go? Want me to go first? Go ahead. All right. Mm, I, I don't know. I don't know what you're gonna pick with this one. The rules. Oh, no, no. Um, did you explain them the rules? Ah, uh, shit. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna give you. I'm worried about the slime part. <laughs> two choices. Uh -huh. Two choices. Uh -huh. yep. You pick one and nobody drinks. You say both or neither and we're drinking. All of us are drinking. Okay. Right. That's it. So if, if you you're pick politically one, correct yeah. and you say neither or both, then we drink with you. And we drink with you. We don't leave you out there by yourself. We yeah. drink with you. Okay. We walk away fucked up too. Yes. So you're saying politically correct? When you say don't both. Don't work. Uh, I like, for, like, for instance, right now, Fat Five Freddy or Ralph McDaniels? Ralph McDaniels. Okay. Okay. You don't have to give an explanation if you don't want to. Or but if you want to, oh, you can. Ralph McDaniels? Oh, man. He's... We need both on drink chance, by I mean, the way. We have yeah, that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Ralph McDaniels, I mean, he's one of the nicest guys you're ever going to meet in hip-hop. Yeah. You know, he's a yes. beautiful soul. He He's authentic hip-hop, even though he his platform has been for rap music. He, ha he is well aware and supports everything. Mm. Good enough for me. Yo MTV raps or video music I mean, box? based on his previous answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, video music box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a Colombian guy who wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> you got it? You want me yeah, you got it. You got. Beat Street or Breaking 2? Beat Street. Okay. I right, really want to say Wild Style. Ooh. Wild style. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. That's true. A crush, crush group, group or wild, wild style? style? Wild style all day. Really? Yeah. Well, explain. Um, it was more. It was it authentic. Was, it was raw, man. It was authentic, and, and you know, those storylines of the. Oh no, I'm thinking. Okay, I'm, I'm confusing it with breaking. My bad. Oh, uh. uh, there's a wild style. I think that I think uh, Wild Style is the genesis for real hip hop movies, mm. even right. before Beach Street or anything like, anything else. Because everyone, Wild Style is the first movie to select all of its um, cast based on 
actual legitimacy in the game. There were no record labels involved. So you were in there because you were actually dope. And if you weren't in there, there was probably like some paperwork issues, but Uh everyone there was at the top of their game. There was no And it seemed almost like a reality show, so shot so raw. That should have been Love and Hip Hop. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. (laughs) Jesus. Okay. You got 80s or 90s hip hop? Oh, fuck, man. Take a shot? Take a shot. Okay. <laughs> I gotta get um Ciroc. Ooh, but okay. I, I'll tell you why. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. Well, let's take the shot first and then go. Yeah, yeah take the shot, then tell us why. <laughs> Come on. Mm. Oh, this is my mother. 80s is my formative years as a, as a teenager. Right. So that's like the soundtrack of your life. Right. That's the shit. Your first girlfriend, you graduated. That's school. when you went to junior high school in Manhattan? Uh, no, I went to, ju- uh, yeah, I went to junior high school in Manhattan. That's mm-hmm. where I got my name, Crazy Legs. Uh-huh. At, a girl. In Inwood. She said, you got some crazy yeah, yeah, legs. Yeah, yeah. In uh-huh. junior high school, 52. <laughs> and, uh, and then. That's how she said it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like, yeah. some crazy yeah. legs. Like, Arlene Rosario was in there. <laughs> so, on, so 90s, I feel I've like. I've been you for like a month, just so you know. I've just nah, been, I've been you. Yeah, yeah. Your research <laughs> is incredible. You, you're like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, go ahead. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, 90s, for me, in my mind, is like the jazz era of hip hop. Mm. Which is quote unquote the golden era is called. Well, I'm, eighty late eighties is golden era. Well, I mean, I think it's late eighties going into mid nineties. Yeah, that but would I, be I the think, golden era. I need to know what you mean by jazz. By jazz, meaning you had talking you, all that jazz. No, no, no. So when you look at Nas and you look at P, no, P's more, little. Uh, yeah. You talk about Nas. We talk about nineties. We talk about Nas. It's the lyrical Nas, era. Tang, yeah. The production. Mob D. Yeah. Like yeah. everything. And, and 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 the lyrical content. Yeah was there was so much diversity from you know from fight the power to fucking to the daisy age right you know right so i i like that diversity there i felt like hip that was uh hip-hop's best voice in mm. terms of diversity right yeah i the 80s, agree 90s 90s fuck the police yeah, in terms of style, yeah, you because you have like, political, you had love, you had everything, whatever. Yeah, Rikers Island out there, they talking about oh shit, we on point, all right. This is me. Okay. All right, all right, cool. You got the next one. E. MC Light or Queen Latifah? Ooh. Take the shot for all females across the world. Yes, yes, yes. You don't want to pick. You don't want to pick. Yeah. Trust me. We need, and we need both we those queens on both, both females. Yes, right. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. mm. Okay. I would say. Oh, you're still picking out of there? Yeah, that's a tough one. I thought we drank. Yeah, yeah, we drank. Yeah, we drank. Yeah, we drank. I, 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 I'd rather not pick, so yeah, we yeah, drank. Yeah, yeah, you drank. That's a toss-up. We drank. You don't have to. You don't have to you don't I think have that's to. a toss-up. Okay, you go to the, the next one. We didn't pick for you. We yeah, 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 we drank for you. <laughs> yeah. Because we don't want you to do that. Okay. Because <laughs> they might both call you and say, what the fuck? No, I'm just playing. Go ahead. Are we going uh, windmill or head spin? Windmill. Damn, I'm about to get shot for that. Cause what? that's hard. I, I know the dude that's made the windmill. That's crazy. I'm just being honest. <laughs> I'm using you as bragging rights. So ever, like, anybody ever say I'm not hip hop? I'm like, I know the nigga that made the windmill. Paul <laughs> 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 yeah, the, the, the next one originally was mad when we were putting this in the list. I didn't think they matched up. But have you seen the mashup they've been doing with these guys? Wu Tang or NWA? Wu Tang. They've been mashing up. Wu Tang with, with NWA with Wu Tang beats, I think, right? Wait, amazing. It's amazing. It's, it's, but it's crazy because we've been asking this question for the past couple months. We, we make it all happen. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, I'm going Wu Tang all day. Because is that is that because it's a regional thing? Yeah, I'm fucking straight. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you. I, I like NWA though. I, I really appreciate them. But I mean, you look. I'm, I'm also looking at the decades of body of work. Right. You know. My thing is. Um, I'm also an East Coaster, so I go with Wu Tang. But one thing I I, I always give uh, to NWA: if you never went to California before and you heard that first album, you were they brung you to California because we just didn't know. I mean, I'm like again, I'm younger. Like I didn't know. I thought California was surfboards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. California. Hey, oh, remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. You had I didn't know tea. these motherfuckers said, fuck the police. Yeah, like, oh, it's shit. a brother that'll smatter you your mother. You already had iced tea. <laughs> no, no, no. NWA came first. No. 
No. Ice T didn't come out of and, 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 he before, came out before, before. Ice T came out before. Ice T came out before. What? I never I met, knew I that. Met, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what I met. No. I met Ice T. Yes. They bro. didn't say that in the movie. No, check this Ice out. Ice T came out first. I, I met Ice T before we went and on. And he was a dancer, wasn't he, too? Yes. No, I, but. No, 6 a.m. You said Ice T. Ice T. Yes. I thought you said Ice Cube. Oh, oh bro, Ice no, 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 no. That, that's what I. That's I'm what I'm talking about. Ice, you T, ice but T. But Ice T was already talking about. Yeah, yeah. That didn't get to me. That got to me King later. King T might have came out too, but I think before. Ooh. Colors, yes, King T. But it I'm wasn't, just saying, I guess it wasn't for you, like how it reached for me because I, right. I, I, now I'm like getting older. Because I'm LA, Miami. Like, so I, like, I, like my, I told you, like I told you, I must have heard Rikers Island first because when I heard um, Straight Out of Compton, I thought Compton was a jail. So I was like, oh, I don't want to go to the <laughs> That's jail. Because you were young. Yeah, I was scared. Young, young, my yeah. was like, oh yeah. shit. And, and I, I'm thinking, like, like how people talked about Rikers Island at that time. Like, yeah. you know, so, um, you know what I mean? 74. So, but getting back to my point, yes, I did hear Ice T. I wasn't. Old enough to decipher what he's saying. I did hear King T, but NWA, I was old enough to say, I don't want to go there. Yeah, their impact because, is and I didn't get to see their videos. All I got to hear was their vocals, their lyrics. So it 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 gave me imagination. You understand what I'm saying? Like it's, like it's like reading a book. You ever read a book where wherever this book is at, you're there? Mm -hmm. That's how NWA was. I That's think, how graphic I think they NWA, were. I think NWA, honestly, from my perspective, yes. my opinion, NWA was brought. An emotion that hip hop didn't have before that. I felt like yes. when I heard, I had you heard all kinds of rap artists. It was artists more like the MC. action. Like Melly Mel was the was the message, and but NWA. Uh, you uh, felt that e. anger. You felt that, that was, intimidation that with uprising. NWA. Like, like he's, and then like, P. Yeah, and hand in hand PE. Yeah. But but you felt like this intimidation and anger for an NWA that you hadn't felt in in, in rap music yeah. up to that point. Yeah. And I felt that that changed that everything. Shit poked the bear. Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, do we take a shot for this or no? Because he, he picked Wu Tang. Let's take a shot. Let's take a shot just for <laughs> NWA and oh, yeah, Wu Tang. Salute. Huh? Yeah, we, we just speak. We just, we oh, just, I meant, I meant yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, thank right, you, right you, before Sonny. we were going on the Wild Style tour. Let's um, make some noise. That's him. how far back. Let's just make some noise with him flossing us. Telling us <laughs> he was on the Wild Style <laughs> fucking tour. So, holy shit. I go to. Yeah, me, I'm going to tell you what me and, first of all, me and Islam did some wild shit. Africa Islam? Yeah. Africa Islam so was Rocksteady. was the jam. first DJ for Rocksteady as well. Okay. And he's a, an original B-boy, but, you know, we were all wilding back then, so I go to meet up with Africa Islam because we're like, all right, we're going to get a, we're going to buy an eight ball, and... You guys were wilding. <laughs> oh, no, this is only to sell on the plane. Oh, uh, yeah. You guys, were, <laughs> you guys were hustling on the plane. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Hold on, hold yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, back then, right? yeah. I remember <laughs> cigarettes and planes. I, I don't know if I heard this correct. Dude, Did was... you just say you had the boy out eight ball to sell? Just slang it on the plane. On the plane. Yeah, it's 30 people from the hood going on tour. Nobody got access to anything. Oh Me and Islam Yo, wild boys. were probably the first hip hop smugglers. <laughs> right. You know, By the way, his and, name and, is Africa Islam. Yeah, I respect you, brother. The righteous dude, right? Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to, he used to come out here to Zulu yeah. when we used to yeah. come out here with DJ Raw and them. Yeah. So when I went to go pick him up to go on tour, Ice T was staying at his place. Mm. So they are, he already, Ice T was already connecting with the East Coast. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we ended up buying like an ounce of weed and an eight ball. And then uh, we're on the plane. And, and then all of a sudden, my man, you know, People are smelling weed on the plane. Y'all smoked weed on the plane? Don't tell me y'all smoked weed yeah. on the plane. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. In the, in, in the back, you just... I you, mean, this is the time that cigarettes... Yeah, so you smoke weed, you stick your head didn't even by know the what toilet. Smell like yet. The suction right. we thought worked. Right. And, and, and then our manager's like, I don't know what kind of drugs you guys got on you, but... You guys better do all of them because by the time we get to Japan, <laughs> the police are waiting for you. Well, this is on the way to Japan? There. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 and you know, oh, Japan yeah. don't play. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, about no drugs. No drugs, no drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They, they, you get canceled for weed in Japan. Oh, yeah, right. Japan don't play. So, yeah, so, you know, we're doing that, and, you know, the only I think the only sober one was, like, Bambada. Wow. You know, everyone's on, like, acid and blow and weed, and, and now we got to do... We got to consume everything now. This sounds like a great flight, though. I ain't going to lie to you. The 80s was crazy. <laughs> that was the original. <laughs> so yo, yo, that was the original. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I was, I was, I was try, 
I'm trying to sit here and be like, oh, no. Nah. And then I'm sitting here like, this sounds oh, great. The whole back <laughs> of the plane was a cloud of smoke. Yes. Holy shit. Yeah. And, oh. and, and the drinks were free back then? Yep. Oh. I mean, I, I was always, a kid. I, I always go on like, every <laughs> plane now and then. I look at it, and I see this leftover ashtray in there. Like, it's a tiny bit of uh, uh, ash. Like, this was used once. <laughs> you know what I mean? All a couple of times. You, you never flew on a plane where they were smoking, right? Yeah. Really? Pan Am, back in the day. Oh, like, yeah. Pan Am. LA to Miami. That was, was my flight. Yeah, we were, we were on Japan Airlines. That's what it was. Japanese. Yeah. Japanese on Japan Airlines. And, and you know, I, got, I actually have, all, I have a whole bunch of uh, behind-the-scenes photos from all those trips that have never been public. Oh, man. So we're gonna we're gonna do a. We're, we're, I'm talking to this dude Jeremy Beaver from the uh, National Museum of Hip Hop in DC, and we're gonna set up a a, a tour of those photos. Oh, did ya? Did, here's the, the the national question: Did y'all do drugs in Japan when y'all landed? We found weed. I have found a, weed. We found weed because I got a picture of Grandmaster Kaz holding a bag of weed. Grandmaster Cass was smoking even back then. Uh, huh? Yeah. This is what you know of Grandmaster Cass. <laughs> he came here, he smoked this whole episode, his whole episode, whole three hours. He smoked every run. Yeah, Goddamn. I mean, I'm down. What's yeah. up? Yo, oh, you smoke? I didn't know you yeah. smoke. Oh, okay. Shit. We, Everybody thinks You know, we got joints. We can give you some joints. I got this. this yeah, give, give him one of those. Give him one of those. This is what the dog. Yeah, please. I don't oh, smoke I mean, as much as Cass. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hell yeah. Yo, so, oh, then now I got to ask you this before we go to Quick Time of Slime. Before finish. we go, we in it. Before we finish it. <laughs> Hold on, let me ask you. Okay. Hey, let me get one of those, too. Oh, I got one. I got one. I got one. No, no, no. Give him a lighter. Give him a lighter if you got one. Thank you. This is an old school question because all of y'all started with Easy Wilders. <laughs> what was the Easy year? Easy Bamboo. Big Bamboo. Yeah, Big Bamboo. Oh, my bad. My bad. Big Bamboo and Easy Wilders, right? When did it transition from... Joints to, to God damn it! I, I respect you guys. Damn it! All right, now you brought it. Yes, yes. When did it go from papers to joints? Well, the papers were joints back then. Mm. You mean from papers to blunts? Papers with blunts. That's what I meant. Uh, That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my bad. I, you I knew think, what I meant. Then that was with white owls. White owls. Yeah. Leather. That's like smoking that, leather. That's yeah. definitely. That had to be easy early '80s. Not mm -hmm. closer to. Uh, Shit, man, like 83. 83. 83. Okay. Around that. Mm hmm Yeah, I used to get shit for free all the time, so I don't know all the time. So you said White Owls came before Philly Blunt, or was it Philly Blunt, White Owl, then Dutch Masters? I think White, White Owls. Owls first. White, White Owls. Owls. Yeah. Philly Blunt was like... Optimals is like... And then everybody no. would walk around with Tipperillos Ooh. just to be cool. Okay, Tipperillos, I remember that. Okay, let's finish quick time. Come on, let's slide. go back. Go ahead. Dougie Fresh or Biz Marquis? You can take a shot. You ain't. Biz is my dude, man. I love that brother, man. So Biz, Biz? let's do a shot for him. Anyway. Yeah, let's do a shot for him anyway. Yep. Yeah. Cheers. Yep. I like that he picked, but still took a shot. I mean, yeah. Biz okay. became a very good friend of mine. Right. And I and I hooked him up with a bunch of archives. Uh, we were doing a trade, and I found out that he was doing trades with everyone, but not trading. <laughs> What's that mean? I don't. <laughs> that mean I don't that he was getting archives from everybody. Right. Your legs. I need that Soul Sonic Force records? tape. Records? Records or tapes? No, mixtapes from oh, back tapes. in the days. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah, Biz was getting everyone's archives of dupes. <laughs> and, and, never, and, never, and never hooked up anyone else. You didn't get the white um, cover? But that was the my boards. dude. All right, let's go to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Busta Rhymes or Eminem? Ooh. <laughs> Busta Rhymes. Okay. Radio or podcasting? Podcast. God damn, make some noise. I'll take a shot for that. I'm taking a shot for that. You can say whatever the fuck you want to over here. I'll take a drink yeah, to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. DMX or Tupac? Woo. DMX. Seems like you want to say something about that. I, I was never into Tupac, and I know people don't, don't agree with me, but, you know, it just wasn't my thing. DMX reminds me of that New York street shit, and I relate to that New York street shit the most. Right. And, and, and you know... Whatever. You ever got to meet Tupac? I met him once, same at a USA uh, nightclub in, uh, in Times Square. Mm, mm. And then we had a fight. <laughs> there was a big fight in the club after that with me and my boys. Not you and Tupac? No, no, no. Oh, no. I okay. met him, then I went downstairs and got into a fight against Mop Tops. You know, Mop Elite Top. Force, uh, Holy shit. Uh, Buddha Stretch and all of them. So mm. we had a big fight with them. Then I had a fight with the bouncers. Like, it was crazy. Whatever. We're glad you calmed down, sir. 
No, I, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, whatever. Well, yeah. rest in peace to both of them. Yes. DMX yes. and Tupac. Yes. Legends. Slick Rick or Rock Him? You take a shot, sir. Rock Him. Oof. Let's stop it telling them to take shots. You gotta let them answer. Uh, I just don't be wanting, you know. I know yeah, everybody got personal yeah, relationships. I, and I, I rock him because he made a lot of beats that I could dance to as well. Mm -hmm. I was into his, his lyricism, like you know, I had already I already knew about storytelling from Grandmaster Cass. Right. So that was already part of hip hop. Right. Rock him was, and at a certain point in my life, I was a five percenter. Mm. Mm. So you never stop being a five percenter unless you start eating pork. I still, I still don't eat pork. Okay, then you still a yeah. five percenter. Yeah. So, okay. So, um, I when he was spitting that, it's kind of like when Wu Tang spit shit, and you walk, you you were around the country when it first came out. You don't. Most of the country didn't know what the fuck Brand Nubian, Wu Tang, or Rock him were talking about when they start spitting knowledge. Yeah. Right. You know. So I, I always found it funny when. When white people would recite certain things, like mm. yo, not no, yeah, they had no idea. <laughs> they had no idea. Okay, KRS One or Cool G Rap? That's a good one. Just take the shot. Damn, I'm gonna say, I'm, you know <laughs> what? I'm gonna say, say, go go say Cool G Rap. No, your face just said, let me take both. But go ahead. Now, I'm gonna say Cool G Rap. Okay. And, and that's because. Again, we can't lead the witness. Like, my, like, bad. Like, <laughs> my bad. And this is like my, my own fucking ghetto trauma of hanging out with people who are wild. And like, I, I, I can relate based on like all the people that died around me right. and have been into dirt, what Cool G right. Rap is talking about. Right. I mean, KRS One is the remedy for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So who did you pick? Coogee uh, Rap. Okay. Yo, Colombia and Dominican Republic. You have distracted. Yeah, bro. Man. Come on. Stop talking, guys. Stop talking about who, which one of y'all no, gonna sniff the more coke next later. Yeah. To, to go and yeah, come on. Get some work. You're distracted. You, you're messing us up. Okay. Uh, mm. Oh, this is a, whoa. Oh, okay. Got it. Big Daddy Kane or LL Cool J? Taking a shot. No, 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 take a shot. You gotta take a shot. You gotta take a shot. <laughs> No, that drink don't count. You gotta take a shot. He has one? Okay, he has one right there. Look, it's little, it's little. Yeah. Cheers, Pause. cheers, cheers, cheers. Here's the thing. Mm. Ooh. I would have said Big Daddy Kane. Yo, guys, what are you guys doing? I would have said Big Daddy Kane. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. I, um, I would have said Big Daddy Kane, but what sealed the deal for me with LL Cool J is that when Red Alert was DJing at Big City, uh, Big City Diner uh -huh. on 11th Avenue in, in Manhattan, was very specific. I think he was doing a party, Red Rum. Mm. And uh, LL showed up, and he got on the mic, just rocked off of breakbeats. And he spit rhymes that were not on his records. Mm. And he just, I was like, oh, shit. Like, that's what I respect. Because right. that's what I grew up on. So when I saw LL spitting, like, straight up fire, like, I'm going to just fucking burn his mic and drop it and bounce, he right. did that shit. And that's when I was just like, yeah, LL's 100% legit yeah. beyond records. Both legends. For okay. Sure. When he, yeah. Disco Fever or The Sound Factory? Disco Fever. Okay. Because I was lucky enough to get up in there and I knew I was too young to even be in there. 16? I went in there at, um, yeah, 16. 15 and 16. Did you know you were living history when you was... Nah, man, we was wildin', bro. <laughs> we didn't fucking appreciate that. Like, you didn't even think about it at all? No, I heard you know. say that before. I heard you say that you weren't even living in the moment. Like, you didn't you didn't no. appreciate, like, anything you kind of was going through. No, we didn't. So when we would go to places, right. first time we went to uh, France... This is amazing. They're like, hey, we want to take you to go see Eiffel Tower. We're like, nah, take us to the hood. <laughs> right, you know, and the hood over there is like, it's Ethiopian, it's Turkish, it's yeah. Moroccan, right. Algerian. African. It, it's, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's where we felt comfortable. We didn't feel comfortable doing all those things. And I feel like I'm lucky to have had a second chance because it would have been nice to have done some of those things. But... Right. You know, you grow up in, in, in the Bronx and you're not cultured. And it's a maturity it's thing, too. I'm shit. sure you were nah, young. Nah, it's, and, it's crazy nah, because... It's nah, a ghetto yeah. thing, bro. Because, yeah, it's crazy <laughs> because I swear to God, me and my Uncle Wise and my first two or three tours around, like, kind of like the world, we, we, we were making it our point not to take pictures. 
Well, that was that was the era. That was the era. The era was Look like at, fuck you, this. All the shit that we back. You remember yes. when we did the magazine? Yes. We, we don't got pictures. We don't of got that pictures shit. of none of that shit. Nobody could even yeah. believe us. Yeah, we no, yeah. all this crazy uh, shit. Uh, our memories. Our hey, memories. But AI yeah. can, do, can fix that shit. Yeah, yeah right? make yeah. it up. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, they make it up. <laughs> Goddamn, like the flyers. <laughs> we could ask Chat GPT the history. Yeah, exactly. When when was hip hop started? Right. Should see what that cross references. Yeah. yeah. Holy shit. All right. Uh Biggie or Big L? Music, Biggie, friendship, Big L. That sounds like a shot to me. So you you in, had a relationship with Big L? Yeah. So that's not, no 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 no. You a shot, not, oh. not a drink. Oh, come on, this is drink chance. I'm oh. not letting you cheat us. Come on, let's go. Cheers, Salud, cheers, Salud. Cheers, Salud. You deserve your flowers. Big L, Big L, no, Big L, Big L was funny, man. man rest in peace. When the first boat. time, first time I hung out with him, he told me some fucking wild story. Like, yo, man, you know what teabagging is? Oh shit! <laughs> That's when a girl's laying down and you drop your balls in her mouth. What? That is mad <laughs> random. Yo. I'm like, yo, this motherfucker's funny. <laughs> I mean, he his lyrics were ill. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I mean, that's it, besides the point. But, <laughs> I mean, when sure. you meet somebody and he's talking to you about teabagging, but that's the type of shit he would he would say crazy yeah, shit. In his yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Okay, come on, come on, come on. So that's like the first couple of words he said to you. He just met yeah, that's why he was wild like he, that. He, he just, Wait, he said oh, hi, nice to meet you. You know yeah, about yeah, teabagging? Yeah, no, no, we, we yeah, all that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, I, I, I can relate because you know I grew up. We all we were always cracking jokes yeah, and shit like that. that. That was amazing. That was cool. Now I'm a, uh, every time I think about me and uh, uh, Big L, I'll be like, oh, teabagging, teabagging, <laughs> teabag king. I mean, rest in peace. Rest in peace. <laughs> we, I love, I love Big yes. L. Yes, Big L bigged me up. It was crazy. Um, before he uh, did he passed away, he was like, he was like, he was gonna change his style, but he listened to me, Cameron, and DMX, and because of that, he just stayed everything. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So and it was like, I was like, I didn't even know he knew who I was. So that's always one of the biggest compliments. And, and I feel he was one of the illest lyricists at that time. Yes. And yes. and then he you know he was there was the whole thing that he was gonna sign to Rockefeller. I yeah. think if yeah. that would have happened and he would have been here still, and it was the whole he would have been him, a force to reckon with. And that's the whole thing. Also, him signing with, with Sony with like with Nas, like I believe they had Dude, to make a, a choice because Big. Well, he was like, on Columbia. Yeah, I, 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 I said right. Sony, but I meant yeah, Columbia. Yeah, which is, it was all yeah. it was all. Yeah, all the, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's why. Yeah. So thank you for correcting that. Okay. Ah. Uh, <clears throat> Roxanne Chante or the real yeah. Roxanne? Taking a shot. Okay. God damn. Yeah, I can't this my uh, yeah. <laughs> There you go. I don't, you know, here's the thing. Oh, man. There's so few female representation to take any of them down ain't cool. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's 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 right. Oh, this is a good one. Got it? Cold Crush or Thanks. Fury Cold Fire. Crush. <laughs> you ain't, let me nah, it don't matter. Cold Crush? I'm, I'm Cold Crush all day. Why? Why? Because I, that was, all right, so I knew. It was Cold, Furious Five, the other one. I know. But you didn't matter. Nah, don't you matter. Because I knew Cold Crush before Kaz was in Cold Crush. Damn. Damn. So the original Cold Crush Brothers was. Was mm, Charlie Chase? No, uh, uh, Little Black, Teddy Ted, Mr. T-Bone, Cisco Kid, and Easy AD. With uh, with Tony Tone and Charlie Chase. Okay. That's the first actual hip hop tape, rap tape that I heard. Right. So that's what got me into it fully. Cold Crush. Thank you. Yeah. And then you know, then Cold Crush became like Cold Crush embodied battling. Mm. You know, so everything mm. that I, I was as a b boy, Cold Crush was, was the top tier in the rap game. Sounds good to me. Tribe Called Quest or Brand Nubian? Mm. <sighs> and that's the era, I love, I love, that's the I era love, we were talking about. I love about. when a person goes like that. Because <laughs> it's like, it's like. Here's the funny thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I need another here's, shot too. Here's my, con, here's my inner conflict. Okay. I've had issues with members of both crews. Issues? I need to hear these stories. But, oh, word? Yes, well, yeah, yes. what's word? the issues with either of them? Oh, issues shit, with Tribe right. Called Quest. Don't tell me it was Fife. You no, Fife is my dog. Okay. Rest in peace, Fife. Yeah, so. rest in peace. No, Jerobi, I love Jerobi. Jerobi's so my we all neighbor. Know Shout out to Jerobi, right? great dude. Good. Yeah. So I wanted to book Q-Tip for something, and I wasn't asking for a discount. Right. And he was kind of like treating it like I was, and, and was giving me the run around. And, and was it time he was dating um, Janet Jackson? 
Uh, no, this is maybe like seven, five years ago, five, six years ago. Oh, so, so not long. No, but this after is, vibrant. Now that I think about no, it, it was just five like, years ago. Yeah, way after. So, all right. So here's the thing. So we ha we have a back and forth, and I'm like, like I don't know who the fuck this motherfucker think he's talking to right now. And, and, and it's like I goof around and I could play and all that stuff, but I could become a different person if I have to. So this you is know? you and Q-Tip speaking direct. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So text guess, or phone? Well, it was text. It's a different Normally thing. Normally we talk on phone, but he was banging his chest a little something while he was on text, and I'm thinking like, I don't know. He's confused right now. Like <laughs> he's talking to the wrong dude. Cause and I said, you know what, my dude, you do you. Fuck you. And by the way. When you had that beef with Rex and Effects, and all that, and Zulu, all that, all that hardware was waiting outside in case something jumped off. I'm the one that supplied that shit for you. Mm. Damn. Yeah. So that's why. But then I love his music. You know. So and, and then you know Lord Jamar with the whole trying to separate black and Latinos. I'm not with that shit. You know. But then I love. You know. I have an affinity to the gods. Wait, I thought Lord Jamar. I mean, not Lord Jamar. Um, not Sadat. Sadat. Sadat? Was it? Wait a minute. No, I can't. Uh, no, it was Lord no. Jamar who said Lord that Jamar. white people are our guests. No, no. Uh, no he said people. Puerto Ricans are our guests. And like, I don't, like, did he say that? Oh, yeah, I, I spoke I, with him. I spoke with him on the phone. And, and, and uh, he started to get a little live with me on the phone. I'm like, yo, my dude, like, again, I don't know who the fuck you think you're talking to, but I'm not the one. Like, right. what's up? And, and then, he, you know, we get to the question of, like, yo, I asked him, like, all right, well, if you think we're a guest, how long did it take to create hip-hop before we got in? Because now you have to deal with actual facts right. and timelines. And there's that, oh, yo, I got to go get my kids. Like, I'll call you right back, and he never called me back. But, you know, to me, and I only make those calls, and I don't do it online because that's some bullshit. Mm -hmm. I call them up, you know, we hit each other up directly. I'm like, you know, because I want to make sure that we're not contributing to the division of black and Latino people. Right. When we need to, we, we're, we're stronger. It's like, it's like this. Somebody told me, because we have our own shit within Puerto Rico. Uh, someone said on, 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 a, on a panel, they're like, yo, Puerto Ricans need to decide whether they want to be 3 million on the island, 5 million elsewhere, or 8 million together. So for me, with black and Latino, I'm like, yo, let's bring all these millions right. together. Because we, we got the same struggles, you know? And at okay. the end of the day, we all know that divide and conquer is the plan. Yeah. And, for and all I of think us, the for problem, all minorities. Yeah, the problem is, is that a lot of uh, fair-skinned people, whether they're light-skinned black or light-skinned Puerto Rican, they start playing that card. Right. And that's where it becomes difficult for us because they want an easy path. So, you know, yeah, I don't know how the fuck I got to that because yeah, that was, over a brand new being... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, no, hey, is, shout out to Tribe but, and Nubian. Yes. But uh, you know, legendary like, like, yeah, man. It's like I, I got love for both of them, but at the end, we got we all have inner family conflict within hip hop. So I don't think you picked either. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. So, uh, Are we drinking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hey, Am hey, I hey, wrong for wanting hey, to hey, hear the backstory hey, hey. to the Rex and Effect? For, for yeah, the, the Rex and I, I kind of want to hear the backstory to that. Okay, Rex and Effect. All right, so here's the deal. We know the, the story, you know, the beef and the... Okay, let's so, take the shot first. Take the shot first. Zulu the story was be backing Q-Tip because he's Zulu Nation. Exactly. So, B.O. No, Q-Tip. B.O., that's the big homie. Yeah, so B.O., that was my dude. Mm. And we had um, some transactions going on. Okay. <laughs> and uh, he was just like, yo... We're gonna do this thing at the mosque, but we don't know how it's gonna happen, and we need we need some weight. And I'm like, all right, cool, I got you covered. So we made sure that a lot of the wheel wells around the mosque were stacked. This was when they were gonna squash it, or this is when he. That's was when they the were gonna squash it, but squash we didn't know what was gonna happen. Right. Okay. But we had to be prepared. And, and it was one of those... was from Harlem, right? Slash Virginia. So, right. Teddy Riley and them. Teddy Riley. Yeah, so we had to make sure that. Do you everyone... remember what they beef was about? It was yeah, it was the New Jack Swing. I'm not uh, hardcore rap. That not was that five. New Jack Swing. Five said it in the record. Right. Okay. It's some immature bullshit. Yeah, it was. No. It, was it was petty. We, everyone for was sure. young, but um, at that time, I happened to uh, be have access to certain things. Right. And it was my little side hustle in between jobs. <laughs> Having hammers. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. And distri distribution. Okay. And, um, yeah, so 
I just supplied what needed to be there and made sure that... Because you was down with Zulu off. Nation. Yeah, yeah. Q-Tip was down with so Zulu Nation. I was back in Q-Tip yes. up. And Zulu was hardcore, bro. Like, yeah. I, <laughs> but he never knew... Like, again, I don't talk. Like, now we could talk because it's like... Like, our past childhood bullshit. It's, 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 they know? say seven and years. And nothing happened. They say seven <laughs> years. This is We talking about 30 years. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. but there's no statutory uh, 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 on murder. No, no, no. We ain't talking about <laughs> right, that. No, Please. Nothing, nothing, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thankfully, so, nothing yeah. happened. Yeah, no, exactly. Thankfully, nothing thankfully. happened, thankfully, because at the end of the day... For you and for hip-hop. Yeah, exactly, because that would have been bad for everybody. Yeah, for everybody, right. But, you know, to me, I just felt like, yo, Q-Tip, just say yes or no. You don't have to right. string me along. Like, right. I, but, and, and don't talk down to me. Especially, you don't even know that I fucking had your back. Right. And you didn't, I never even threw that at your face to let you know that I was the one taking care of everything. Mm. I mean, maybe it was a miscommunication with you guys on the team. No. I mean, I'm trying to benefit. We all know Q tip, man. (laughs) (laughs) He's abstract. (laughs) (laughs) Sonny the therapist. The therapist. Yes, man. Hey, here's the thing. I think. But you got to work it out. Yeah, you work yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah, but, okay. but, but somebody should never underestimate the power of a person in front of you, you know? And, and I may chill, be cool or whatever, but if my back's up against the one, I have to flex. Yeah, I, I right. have the means. Yes, I, you do. But I also don't hang out with certain people because I know that if I have an issue, they want to accelerate shit to the worst level. And I'm like, so I have to stop hanging out with a lot of people that would ride or die for me like that because right. that shit will get me killed. Right, right. No, let's stay in positive energy. No, yeah, positive, man. Positive. I'm more about helping people, pushing hip-hop, and... and, and Coming to drink champs. Come, yeah. And make, and make some noise. Hey, and let yeah. me tell you, yeah. Here's the thing. You do not understand. Number one, I'm proud of you guys. Yes, thank uh, you. Cause yes. Thank I'm, you. You know, not many people can maintain their relevance this long. Right. Thanks. Yes. This game. And, and, and giving it to our heroes. Yeah, yeah. And, and because, so this, just well, hold on, let me, let me just stop you for one second. I don't mean to make it about you, but you're a hero. Thank you. Like, um, uh, all the things that hip-hop has received a black eye for a long time. Yeah. And sometimes our own fault. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I, no. I, I'll be the, I, know, I know the dumb shit that I've done in my life. Right. Right. Okay, let's finish quick Thomas line. Well, he was saying, he was talking. Okay, let's talk. Oh, like I going. forgot. <laughs> okay, uh, real, Either we'll, way, we'll yeah, I got we'll love for both of them. We we'll already drank. Okay, yes. New Jack City or Juice? Uh, New Jack City. Okay. You don't need to explain unless you want to. No, nah, I just didn't like the fucking last line of Juice. I'm like, well, you, you got, got the juice, juice. now? <laughs> <laughs> Because you remember when that word finally came, that word yeah, came out? Yeah, it was just You got corny, the juice? It was juice, bad. Juice was corny? Not, not the movie No, no, juice. the way they used the it. The word they used it, okay. Well, yeah, maybe yeah. the way they, but I mean, juice is a, is a great I mean, if yeah, you listen yeah. to that it, line, it, it inspired and me. then you hear Rakim say, it sip the juice. To DJ, yeah. no, for DJ. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, where we at? This one, I don't know where you're going to go with this one. You saying it? Yeah, I got to go there. I got to say this one. Nas or Jay-Z? Nas. Wow, fast. I've, I've, I bought, and, and those are two of my top all-time MCs, but yeah. there's no other album in every form that I bought more than uh, Illmatic. Illmatic. And what you mean in form? Uh, yeah. From CD, vinyls, CD, CD to wax, everything, yeah, because, right. you know, I DJ also, so right. that means your records get fucked up or right. stolen, whatever, right. and, and, you know, you got to have mm. that Illmatic. Mm. Your Illmatic saved my life. I got to do the next one. Yes, you got to do the next one. Vinyl or tape? Vinyl or tape? Vinyl. And that's the EFN answer, too. I think you should take a shot just for that. Just you. Relax, relax, relax. <laughs> the, next, the next one's a good one for me. Kid Capri or Red Alert? Red Alert. Okay. I know Kid Capri before he blew up. I know him from the 1980 when he used to hang out with this other crew over on the Upper West Side. Mm. So, yeah, I knew him before. For his fifty, was he the Italian beats. stallion at that time? No, nah, he was. I, <laughs> you know, he happened to. I don't. And no, funny no, thing, but I don't, I don't want to get himself there. I think Rocky. he used to hang around this group called the Shamrock Crew. Uh-huh. Uh, and his funny shit is that they're fucking Shamrock Crew, but they're all black. And I didn't get and that. Shamrock <laughs> means Irish, right? That's, yeah, that's Irish. Right? Yeah. Uh, I'm, 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 like, I'm gonna tell you a funny story. So uh-huh. we're in a Zoom meeting one day, 
And this brother walks in. It's like a recruitment day. And, and you know, we bug out. We're all stupid. But, you know, if somebody say something funny or or, or something to make you think, you, you're going to say something. So, so you said you had the Zulu meeting. Zulu so meeting in Bronx Recruitment Bronx, day. Huh? In the 90s. Recruitment day. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, okay. So this dude, there was this one crew that comes in, and they were all P- Puerto Rican, and they're like, we're called uh, the leprechauns. And Bambada's like, okay, well, if you're going to call yourselves out of what you are culturally, why are you calling yourself like that? Like, you're like Lucky Charms, or what, what, what's your deal? And then this other brother, he was super dark-skinned, Ethiopian style, and this motherfucker says, yeah, uh, my name is Spook. And we're like, this mo- <laughs> like, yo, what the fuck? Oh my god! And oh. It, yes. Oh my god! The hibiki has kicked in. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Be, all right, let's finish quick time. Right, slime. Yeah, we two away. I want to talk about. Okay, go ahead. Studio Fifty Four, Land Quarters. Land Quarter. Yeah, I've never been there, but I did perform at Studio Fifty Four in nineteen eighty or eighty one. But you say you've never been to where? Land Quarter. Land Quarter. Never went to Land Quarter. But you're picking Land Quarter. Yeah. Because Land Quarter for hip-hop is legendary. Right, right, right. Yeah. Right. I respected okay. that. Respect answer. that, yeah. Okay. You want to do the yeah, last Yeah, no, go ahead, go ahead. Take All this one. All right, so me and EFN, we always say that this is the only one that everyone should kind of take a shot for because we believe one goes with the other. But it doesn't matter. You can do whatever you All right. want. Whether it's loyalty or respect. Ooh. Loyalty. Explain. Loyalty is the definition of respect. We agree. Yeah. And that's why we're taking a shot for that. Yeah. Yeah. That's not why we're taking a shot for that. We're just taking a shot. Yeah, yeah. Just no, keep, no, no, let's no. Just be I like how you break it down. Let's be honest. Uh, you, you, want, yeah. you want to elaborate on that? Like, why is loyalty the definition of respect? Um, yeah. You can still... Respect someone, fuck up on them, but you can still be loyal to them. Mm. You know, I could fuck up on you. Mm. Could be whatever's going on in my own head. Owe you money. Oh, yeah. Thanks. But Evan. intent is everything. I don't intentionally mean that shit. Right. And, and at the end of the day, uh, we could be at odds, but if we have a certain amount of history between us, when you're at your worst moment, I'll be there for you, no right. matter what. I respect that. Yeah. I'm that dude. I'll shut down. Especially yeah. nice to that. Yeah. Let, let me ask you, when you've traveled internationally battling, what country has been the biggest, like, the, you know, the, the biggest headache in battling? Like, who, who really was a force to reckon with internationally? Here's the thing. Like, as far as big battles, international battles and all that stuff, I've never really had to do. Um, but what I recognize is what other people bring to the game. And a while back, I went to Russia, uh, to this place that's close to the border of Kazakhstan, and... Was Borak there? <laughs> so He was battling. They, they, and, and here's the thing. All, all these little white kids are, are like the best dancers in the house. They got fucking mad soul, flavor, rhythm. And I'm thinking, like, what kind of pain did these motherfuckers go through? Right, right. You know? And, and then they told me that they were from, like, a war-torn area. Oh, yeah, those were areas. And, and to they me... Really growing, in pain. Yeah. So, yeah. so what, growing up the way I grew up and, and all the violence around us, I was like, yeah, I get it. Like, I, I could see, like, like, when... Like, either you have... I feel like either you have soul or you don't, or... You just haven't found your lane yet. Right. Mm. But when you see people who, who are dancing and that it's not theatric, it's just the real pain right. that they, they show, I think that's dope. And I can relate to that. So it was there. Yeah. In that part yeah, of the yeah. world. I, and you know, sometimes I feel like you could be like the dopest visually dynamic person, but if I could walk away feeling your emotion as you're rocking out, that's more important to me. Mm. Because that'll, I'll remember that more. And I re- I'll never forget those kids now. Like, I'm bringing it up now. I don't know them, never met them, but they left an impression of soul in me. And that and was if, better than any movie. It feels like in that part of the world, and, I, and we, we've talked about this story several times, uh-huh. like, they, they really fight to have hip-hop in their lives. Because we had nothing out, else. Like, we had nothing else. We went to Russia, and the people that brought us out were, were called hip-hop, no, Russians against Russians racism. Against racism. 
Like they yeah. were. That's, that's an like, oxymoron, yeah. bro. <laughs> and then they had they had they had the buttons. It actually said yeah. the, the buttons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I've had interesting experiences in Russia. No, Russia's hardcore. Like, I was brought out there by by an oligarch. Oh, which by, is by what oligarch. The, the people that run shit, <laughs> the richest motherfuckers. Yeah, they run shit. Okay. Like, this like person, Putin's people, like the people yeah, that. That's, that's, yeah, these are like the richest people. And, and when you, you're talking about power, these people can just like open up a bank in the middle of the night. That kind of power. Right. Yeah, so I've had to deal with I've dealt with Yeah, that. Russia's an interesting. It was good. Place. It worked. Uh, it's financially good. Right. <laughs> we didn't. We didn't enjoy ourselves. <laughs> no? <laughs> we went to the club and oh, man. the security let me has key masks. Well, let me connect you then. No, I got the plug. No, 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 no. Just talk about one time. Yeah. After we got to try it After the again. heat yeah, phase out. Phase I want to go, know? well, after they stop fucking warring, yeah, would, so, uh, you know, the Russian hey, people you know seem funny? like funny? And, and the one who made uh, this right here, he also used to be a stick-up kid, too. God damn it. Yeah, he's throwing you under the bus. This motherfucker used to walk, <coughs> walk around with a big ass blade. This motherfucker corporate. And he just yeah, no. crazy they, legs they, said, Come out, we come crazy come come on. And Sonny did a murder yesterday. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> nah, but you know, I think, number one, I, I, I don't know if you ever heard anyone, but, you know, we actually used to go stick it up with your brother, too. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> with, with. And, and I'm going to tell you how dumb shit was back then. Since we were so young, and, and, and I'm not going to throw their names out there, but there was these two kids that we stuck up outside of a graffiti, like not uh, uh, an art supply store. They had, just, they had just stolen whatever they stolen, right. and then we robbed them. And then a week later, they became part of my crew. Makes like, sense. Weird shit. <laughs> <laughs> right, but let, let's, get, let's get to this story, right? The New York City Breakers, they are originally floor masters. Yes. And you pick, handpicked the floor masters? Because if, according to their story, I believe this is their story. Their story is convenient. But damn. Okay. That sounded like... But their like story I'm was damn. you guys picked them because you thought that y'all could beat them. No. Okay. So we had this show coming up in the Grill Nightclub, and that was like 1982. <coughs> and we were tired of doing shows where we would perform a With battle against each other. Each other, yes. And we knew we had these little rivalries in the city, like uh -huh. New York City Breakers. Some of them, we all went, well, some of us went to Kennedy High School. And I was just like, yo, you know, the same way I selected uh, Dynamic Rockers, which got them into Star Wars, I selected New York City Breakers because it's like, yo, let's have a real battle. Right. And Might as well yeah, be that's some how. Real um, shit. And, and then uh, it's funny thing is that Michael Homan, uh, who became their manager, he asked us that same night, like, hey, I want to be a manager. And I'm, we're like, like, it's me, Frosty Freeze, and Take One. And again, like, arrogant, ignorant motherfuckers. We're like laughing in his face. Like, nah, get the fuck out of here. Yo, no, hell no. Mm. And um, he ended up meeting floor masters that night. And that's how they became New York City Breakers, because he started managing them. So floor masters, floor masters became New York City Breakers? Yeah. Did they have other? Ch I swear there was floor masters out here in Miami. No, it may have been a different crew. Okay. Yeah, but they didn't have chapters. Floor, like that. floor. Yeah. Floor. 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 Oh, floor. <clears throat> you know Flo? Who from the commercial? She gives you your insurance. <laughs> so, uh, but I'll tell you a wild story just please. for your show. We in. One day we go to Dance Interior, right? And we go on a night that isn't our night. Okay. And this is a place where What do you I, mean isn't our night? Like, like, not, we, like we had uh, like that party that went from the grill went to Dance Interior. Okay. It was called Wheels of Steel. And y'all so, would have from Tuesday to Thursdays? It would be on like a Wednesday. On Wednesday. Wednesdays. That's y'all. Because then it turned, the, the, the name of the party was Wheels of Steel Wednesday. Okay. And um, so we go on a different day. I'm like, hey, you know, the guy, this guy who's a legendary doorman, uh, <laughs> Dance Interior, he ended up being like the guy at, at, at the Palladium. Um, like, Not hey, John Googie Rivera. Huh? No, 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 no. This is a guy named yeah. Howie. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, 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 I was trying, yeah, I was trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him and I got beef or yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we, I, we go into Dance Soteria and, and we go in there and like, we're all dudes like from the hood and it's just like all gay. Like, 
all right, well, this might not be all night. <laughs> you know? Not, not so, spikes. Huh? This is real. It was a gay, it was a, gay it was a private party. It, it turned out that it was gay. And, and we go there, and we're like looking on stage, and there's that guy's on the mic, and then all of a sudden he brings someone up on stage, and dude starts giving him head on stage. And we're like, oh. yeah, and we're like, yo, all right, well, we got to get out of here now. Like, this ain't our scene. L- this Whatever. Extra. Let him do that thing. So I get outside, I'm like, yo, Howie, um... Just happened on stage. Like, what's going on? Oh, that's Freddie Mercury. Oh, it's shit. His birthday. Uh, from Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Freddie Mercury, Mercury from Queen. Queen. Wait, yeah. he was the one getting head? Yeah, on stage. Oh, my for his God. Birthday. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, what the fuck, man? <laughs> it's, 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 it's crazy but legendary all at the same time. <laughs> hey, I wanted to, I may as well bring something good, right? <laughs> I don't know what to say. You know yet. Freddie Mercury, though, right? From Queen? No, you don't know who it is? No. You, yeah, no. you do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. From the group Queen? Yeah, yes. yeah. The lead. Bohemian you know, Rhapsody? <laughs> Trying to change the subject. Yes, but... No, so my, my point is... But damn, on stage? Here's the thing. <laughs> no Instagram back for, then. No, for hip-hop back... Yeah, for hip-hop back then, the reason why hip-hop became successful was because... There was a, 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 a genesis of the reggae scene, the punk rock punk scene, scene, and what was happening in the hood. Right. So all those things coming together, it was just like a culture shock, and we're like, yo, these motherfuckers are wild, or whatever. But at the same time, even with, with like, whatever the gay scene was, and even if a lot of us were like raised homophobic, um, a lot of that scene, they're the first ones to give us a stage. It's the counterculture side of it. Everything was counterculture. Yeah. That's punk, reggae. Right. It was all counterculture. And, and our, our manager was a punk person. There was a lot of gay people within her world. Right. And those connections that she, she had to put hip hop on stage was from that community. The, the same here in Miami. Some of the first hip hop parties were at known gay clubs. Not they, the parties weren't gay, right? Not, but that's the only exactly people that point. would allow the parties to happen in their venue were venues that were doing yeah. gay events. Yeah, easily. That's facts. The the uh, the person who who um, got it's us true, to it's true. It's just, it's true. It's true. Then you had your moment, man. No, 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 no. Hey, hey, hey. Listen, you know, the spot that I brought you at. Uh, that spot that I brought you at. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It is what it is. That was a venue. I mean, that was that. And you, it's business. It's, not, hey, it's hey, business. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Either we can confront our reality. Bro, it is what it is. Or we can it is bullshit what it is. our way through life. Yeah. It and, doesn't and, make you anything different no, than who you are. It just makes you a fucking you know better saying? person to be able to like be like, all right, cool. Well, no problem. Whatever. You know, but, um, but at the end of the day, you can't deny that. Like, if you want to talk about how hip hop got its platforms, its first platforms, you might want to question who those people were. Because there may have been people there who were looking out for you that you actually grew up not liking. Expand on that. Meaning that if you're a fucking homophobe, but you don't know that, and you love hip-hop, but you don't know that a lot of those clubs were clubs that were owned by gay people or run by gay people, but gave hip-hop its first platforms... Right, it, right. It's like, oh shit, and then you gotta hate them. Like, I'm not a homophobe. I don't give a fuck, you know? <laughs> right. It ain't hurting me. Right, right. right. No, they ain't you know? Me neither. That's real. right. Yeah. That's real. Yeah. That's real. So let's talk about USA Skating Ring. You went out there yep. in Queens and you said you broke even. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we went out to their turf, and to me, if I battle you on your turf with your crowd and it's, and by, by audience, it's a tie. I'm, like, I'm thinking in my mind, yo, we've smoked these motherfuckers. Right. Like, right. like, I'm in your neighborhood, and, and it's a tie, right. and we don't, we don't, we're not bringing our own judges. So we ended up getting a gig at Lincoln Center, uh, August of 81. And, 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 and when I'm watching, Lincoln Center is in Manhattan. I always thought Lincoln Center was in the Bronx. Mm-mm. But what, what center is You think is about in the Bronx? Fordham. Fordham, okay. Fordham, because okay. Fordham, Fordham has a Bronx oh, campus. Okay. So, um... I invite, you know, that's that's how we ended up battling uh, Dynamic Rockers for a second time. Mm, mm. And that's when it's like, Ramelzi's on the mic. We, uh, I don't even know the, who the DJ was, but 
Um, it was the first time hip hop was at Lincoln Center. Right. And that was just like the definitive, like neutral ground. Like we smoked you motherfuckers. And like if you were interviewed them, they would never talk about it. Right. It never even comes up in their, in their history. Mr. Lee, you over there making noise, and you over there making noise. You're a Dominican Mr. Lee is bored, bro. Yeah. He's bored. Come on, you're the only one talking. And you're the one who starts yeah, the show. Yeah, he makes the stuff. Everyone be quiet. Speech. No one No breathe. phones, no you're talking, no breathing. <laughs> be quiet. We don't like, listen, we know that Dominican got hate on Puerto Yo, Ricans. We know that. I'm going to tell Mr. Ah, Lee to do it. it. Mr. Lee. Dominicans and Puerto Ricans did not get along yeah, in the back late in the 70s. Back in the oh, my God. Back in the, so yeah, what? they were like the new the new hicks. We yeah, already yeah. went through our phase. Oh, shit. <laughs> Crazy legs said it, not me. <laughs> hey, but it's true, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. At one point, we were them. Right. There's always a new group. It's true. And now in New York, well, I'm not going to get it. They'll get offended if I bring it up right now. Oh, now Mr. Lee's like, I can talk now. <laughs> you always have beef with us at the handball court. Because we were nice. <laughs> yo, but, 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 yo, bro, how the hell are you have the Benjamin Buttons disease? You reverse in ages of, you still look young. Is that the young. exercising of dancing? Actually, that- I, I slacked off on my exercising. I love boxing. That's my... That's my that's my first love right there before dance. So I love doing that, and um, yeah, my girl fucking be on my case because wow. she's Japanese and she eats different. Yeah, no, I, I think um, a little bit of denial goes a long way. Uh-huh. Hit the gym a little something. I, I choose not to be overweight All right. uh, as best I can, and that's difficult because. Throughout my life, I've been through a lot of injuries. If Ooh. you know, like if there's like the six million uh, dollar man, that's me. I've right. had maybe seven surgeries. Damn. I probably need three more. What's and, the guy, Evil Knievel? Yeah, Evil Knievel. That's you, what. Yeah, you're the Evil Knievel. I remember him. And, and you know, it's crazy because I'm I'm a part of hip hop, which the element determines when you stop. You know, mm. it's not me. The element decides that. Right. It's like, all right, your body's done. Right. You can't. Right. Like you can keep, you can spit bars. Yeah, hopefully. I can't dance where I used to. No, I'm gonna talk shit for the rest. Yeah, but yeah, it's all good. Shit right here is cool. Yeah, I ain't injuring my elbows no more. No, 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 no. <laughs> Your elbows? I used to be going out, going. Oh, <laughs> Your elbows you know, got injured yeah, like that. I used to be like this so much. Oh, but, oh my shit, my but, shit hurt. You got like, carpal yeah, tunnel yeah, yeah, on yeah. your elbows? Yeah. You know what's a crazy thing? <laughs> Had and, and this is like the, the main turning point for me as a kid mm. is that um, I was scheduled to be in the Junior Olympics for boxing, mm. but wow. I didn't have the fourteen dollar registration fee. Damn, and that was when it was like, okay, well, I'm gonna be dancing instead. Right. So you know, boxing is is my first love. I love fighting. I don't mind getting punched in the face. It's cool. Was, was it? Um... Uh, B boy in, in in the soft Olympics, wasn't it? In the soft Olympics, it was in the uh, youth Olympics. It's called the youth Olympics in 2018 okay. in okay. Buenos Aires. Okay, yeah, cool. And now is this, is, is it going to get in the 20? It's in 2024 Paris, and um, wow, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm, I still have my reservations because I need to see how it plays out. Because right. to me, if there there needs to be a pathway that leads back to the hood that creates a level playing field for black and brown people to be able to have access to the resources that gets them to the Olympics. Because mm. right. it comes from us. And if right. it comes from us, we should have that first opportunity at, at, at a level playing field. And are they also going to create some sort of ambassadorship pro, uh, ambassador pro, ambassadorship. Uh, uh, ambassadorship program mm. that leads into communities to educate people on how we as a people contributed and created this. Because how does this system work? Like, these people come compete, and then if they win the Olympics, they get the gold medal or whatever. Yeah. But if they lose, they're completely out of, they yeah, go straight back to the hood? That's it. Damn. So I, And so for me, at the end of the day, is the Olympics the great fucking international uh, platform? Yeah, it is yeah. what it is. But basketball is in the Olympics. Yeah. But the Olympics will never be the NBA. So we need to maintain our shit when it comes to like those indep- independent events that hip hop throws and continue to support those. Because right. the, the Olympics is once once every four years. To make right. hip hop and the people here the elite. Yeah. Just yeah. like NBA have, is the elite. Yeah. Right. And that means that we have to lift each other up right. instead of take each other down. Right. Oh, that's real. That's real. Could you I'm, imagine people training 
to be in the Olympics as B boys and B girls, and they don't even give a fuck about hip hop at all as a culture. I can imagine that. Like, I want to train to play handball in the Olympics. Yeah, but you're Puerto Rican. You were born playing great. handball. That's what I was. That's right. Like, I think handball <laughs> Me deserves too. to be in the Olympics, bro. And I would like. Oh, I thought it was. No. Hey, hey I'm going to tell you and right they, now. They called it some other shit when it was in the Youth Olympics. They called it some. They called it Patiwa? No, I forget what they called it. It was, it was how. So, not one. Like like right now, one of my missions is, it, missions is uh, can I raise some sort of money through some sort of corporation or organization that is hip hop mm. to support the people that are representing breaking in the Olympics? Because right now, there's not one hip hop entity that's supporting any b boy or b girl in the Olympics right now. Mm. So you telling me Rock Nation is not nobody, no, nobody, Rock Nation. zero, Rock Steady, zero. Rock Nation. Rock, oh, supporting. Rock Nation. Yes, yeah, supporting. So they're, you tell me supporting no it? one. Uh, revolt. No one. Absolutely no Bad one. Bad boy. And these people need, and, and here's the thing. Wu-Tang they need Clan. Nobody. No one. Zero. Mass Appeal. <laughs> nobody. What about Rock Steady? I would tell you, well, if we had the resources, I'd do it e- immediately. No problem. I mean, I should be. But maybe these people don't know. Maybe, these, maybe we should I mean, say that. Maybe we should say. Maybe we should call. And maybe this is where it happens. You know, G you Unit, know? G Unit. Uh, no, but shouldn't Rocksteady be like consultants to what they're doing to oversee? Yeah, but then you have to figure out like, all right, who are the people leading? Um, Cash money records. I don't think the record Young labels. Money I don't records. think the record no, labels should be a part of enough. I mean, to, to, to sponsor, yes. Yeah, sponsor, sponsor maybe some bread. Sponsor, yes. We yeah. want, You know what I've watched? I watched this golf tournament that. It, it was similar to that, where if you win the golf tournament, you get everything, but if you lose, you get nothing. But the people that... But that's that, like that's a called qualifier. Yeah, but the, but the people that don't get nothing, they still have private jets. They still... Because these people who sponsored them just because they had their logos on yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Sh- shouldn't There's it be something like, like that? that? And that's what I'm, I'm trying to advocate for because I know the brothers and sisters that are in it. And if and it's crazy because 600000 gets them through the next year into the Olympics to be able to make the qualifiers, hire a trainer, you know, meal programs, all that well, stuff. Doesn't it start at the qualifying level? Like the DM, yes. like, like DMC, like shouldn't it be like that? Yeah, it does. But I, I know the people who are already guaranteed to go in, who have done enough already. But it's like they may have like small sponsorships here and there, but there's no one footing the bill to say, yo, you're good from here to the Olympics. It's not and a that monster. Shit, that shit only costs $600,000. That's it. Each person or the whole group? The whole group. Oh, wow. To give them some peace of mind and be like, yo, I don't have to work. You know, I I can just focus on dancing, you know. I mean, if it's Olympic, that's the way it should be. Yeah, and and, and the the fact is that, like, that shit was born here. Right. And and a lot of rappers' watches got more than that. So the thing is, if you look at, I think, a lot of the other countries, they're supporting their people. The country. U.S. is not. Not one company in the that's U.S. Ridiculous. But let me ask you, is that hip-hop's responsibility? As, and that's who, no, But that's that why I said first, there's not one hip-hop entity that has stepped up. But maybe we don't know that. Like maybe, No, but, but actually... Well, I know one the stepped up to at, inquire. I'm not going to bring them up, but... It You're not bringing up anywhere. nobody, bro. Yeah, yeah, nah, nah. Nah, I, Can you have another shot? I Give this man another yeah. shot. And we're going we go, we go to play. Hey, at least you know how I get down. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes, but you know, you know what? This is, this is, uh, and I'll take a shot too. Um, this is, this is a hip hop safe zone. I believe that people, our forefathers, you know, co signed this show. And it's not about, you know, blowing nobody up. It's just about telling the, the truth. Not to yeah. say, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, you know, I had a brother on here the other day and. We went, and, 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 and then he says to me, you know, this, this is going to get me in trouble, right? And I go, <laughs> it should, right? And No, it shouldn't. <laughs> you know, the, the, the content. The, the, listen, I, I say this a lot. Maybe I didn't say this on the show, but the truth is more powerful than a lie always. If it's the Be, truth. It, yes. No, if it's the truth. Let me finish. Then go for it. The truth is more powerful than a lie because a lie, if you don't identify with the lie and correct the lie, the lie will go away eventually. But the problem the is that truth, everybody has their own truth the, nowadays. No, not when it's four niggas at this own table and everyone say, I remember that. Right. <laughs> that is one million percent solid the truth. Right. And when you try to run away from that, it, it's it's going to pop back up. That's all, you know what I mean? Hold on, hold on, hold on. 
Oh, I got, I got but but, you, but, you know, I'm gonna tell you, like, yeah. when it comes to the truth, the way I see it is like this. There's a lot of people I know, I know that they deep shit, that dirty, I know that dirt. Mm. But even if they die, is that the safe zone? Because when they die, they still got kids that gotta fucking live that legacy. True. So the I, mic. Don't, I don't want, I don't. The mic, crazy. The mic. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, so I choose to make sure that, you know, honestly, like if we did dirt together and you fucking, even if you turn your back on me, I'm still not gonna snitch. Right. But. You know, because it, it, it's bigger than that for me. And that could be my own ghetto trauma, stupidity, or whatever it is. But well, that's your that's, that's your how morals, I live. and that's everybody yeah. should have moral grounds that they stand on. I could fuck up a lot of people's careers right now, yeah. easily, you know, and people I, that probably deserve it. But I'm still not gonna do it. Right. Okay. That's real shit. Now let me ask you: B boy originally stands for Bronx boy. Yes. Yeah. So, so we, we see, established that break yeah. dancing isn't what B boy yeah. is. So, so I, when you see people from Brooklyn calling themselves a B boy and people from Queens, is that laughable? Yes. Yeah, no. 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 So no, because shit evolves, and that's cool. All right. Only it's only when you're not that. So I was in San Francisco in like around '93, and I go to this event that Run DMC is in, and, and you ask Run DMC about the B boy, and they say. Because when it came to Queens, it sounded for a lie. Yes. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't Who know that. I, I was like, I was like, because I, I was sitting there, and I was like, <laughs> fuck. I, I wish, I, to tell you the truth, as a Queens person, I wish they had a better answer. Or was that the I correct answer? I appreciate that, because then we found out that Jam Master J was actually a B-boy. Oh. That he actually danced? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Jam Master J... And, and everything was a B-boy, though. Yeah, yeah. He was he was 100% He was legit. the guy. He was so, the guy. Rest and I had beef with them, too. <laughs> with, wait, wait, with Run that. DMC? With B-boy Wait, 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 wait. He had yeah. beef with Run DMC? Yeah. Why? Yeah, I need to Oh, man. During the Source Awards... Which Source Awards are uh, we talking about? Well, I'll tell you. Well, when Run DMC was performing, uh, it was in the 90s. Okay. And... I feel like uh, Downward Rock Steady DJs the at the time, uh, Mix Master Mike, Cuba, and DJ Apollo... They were Legends. performing at the Source Awards as Rocksteady DJs, and they did their routine in rehearsal, did the Peter Piper routine in rehearsal. Peter Piper, Parker, Pickle. Yeah, yeah. Parker, so they, they did that routine. No one said anything. So during the show, they start put, uh, doing that. Run is running them uh, going to perform after. So they're pissed off because nobody wants their music played before they perform. And they pulled the plug on them in the middle of uh, in Madison Square Garden. And I'm sitting like in the front row, and I just pull the plug on Run DMC. Huh? No, on the yeah. DJ. Run, on run, the, on run, run. Pull the plug on the DJ playing his music. Yes. Yeah, yeah, on the DJ. I'm saying, yeah, pull the plug on the DJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I feel that. I'll so I that. ran up from, I ran up into the stage in the back audience, and me and him started talking shit like, and I'm like, yo, what the fuck, you know? Because okay, let me stop you for a second. Recently, I seen Wiz Khalifa. Come on stage and do the same thing. He berated a DJ. Like he went in on. And then I see every DJ in the world. Oh, you mean? Yeah, yeah. That was why. Kind of like go against them. Is this the situation you're describing? No, this is different. No, no, this is different because they did a rehearsal. Everybody knew what was going to be played, but in the middle of the show, in front of a packed audience of seven thousand people, Uh it's a Paramount Theater. They're gonna go pull the plug on them and humiliate them. They came from San Francisco yeah. to do this. And show. these are legendary DJs. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and so, you know, me and Run mostly got into it. I love and, it and, you know, he was up in the stairway and I'm trying to get at him and people are holding me back. Because it's like, yo, I'm not gonna let you bully my dudes. They're my crew. I don't give a fuck who you are. And, and yeah, that was it. I'm still a fan though. Did you have an afro at the time? At that time, yeah. <laughs> you have a blue sweater? No. <laughs> All right, cool. You envision his own outfit? I envision him being like, you know, I'm like, you a scary I'm guy. I gotta take a pee too. You gotta take a pee? Hold on. Uh, nah, I'm good, man. All right. I had to put this up like this, right? All right, there. before I'm. All right, this is, this, is, this is a pre question, but um, I gotta ask it. Because I see people trying to recreate it. Mm-hmm. Can fat laces ever come back? Mm. We started Fat Laces. I know. That 99 cent store? Oh, oh that 99. Don't tell yeah. me, don't tell me the fact We were Lace using elastics. From the 99 cent store. No, from elastics that would be used for um uh by how do you say it? What's the word I'm looking for? 
people who, who are a uh, seamstress and shit like that. Uh-huh. So that's how we started from our perspective. Uh, even before that, fat laces was about taking regular laces, wet them, take the tip of the iron, press down, and then widen them out. Yeah. And, in the 70s. And then, yeah, yeah. Who made the creases? I don't know, man. You got to ask Cat. <laughs> that's some... I- yeah, that's some older dude shit. And I see that in Paid in Fall, and they was asking for the creases. Yeah, I, I yeah. used my creases on the Lees. On the Lees. Lee Riders. Well, you, you should snatch Lee patches? Uh, nah, we would, there was this place uh, called Martin Brothers on Fordham Road, mm. and then they had a patch that said Onyx. And, and those are like the high-end Lee Riders, uh-huh. but we, that was the spot we got our Lees over there. I used to snatch Lee passes, patches and collect... Um, the Mercedes Benz. Oh yeah, everybody the, did that. Yeah, that's that's late, we did it in Miami. That's some late '80s shit. And the Cadillac. Yo, I was like Cadillac. I was so poor. I would pop this shit yeah. and, and put, put it on, it on like the chain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we yeah, do yeah, that here yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I used to think I was dip. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, yo, little poppy. We know you don't got a fucking Cadillac. <laughs> like, 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 like. <laughs> we're not clapping for all that. Hey, I, I just want to be clear on one thing, like. Mr. Lee's on one too. So, so to me, when I talk about the negative shit in my life that I've done or I've been Thank a part you. of or experience, it, it's not to brag about it or celebrate it. It's history, mm. man. It's just, no, it, it's yeah, it's history, but at the same time, you know, to be able to turn your life around and just walk away from shit mm. before it hits that next level, you know, it, it, there, there's a lane for that too. Right. You know, and... and I guess trying to show people like, yo, you know, yeah, we all come from, a lot of us come from a fucked up situation. Right. I can tell you shit that would blow your mind, but but when um, people hear those stories, but they don't hear like, hey, but I'm doing this X, Y, and Z right now, you know, we got to give that contrast to give them some clarity. Like, yo, my dude, you don't have to stay stuck on stupid or or, or be susceptible to that peer pressure. You know, so. and and I think that's the power of hip hop. To be honest with you, although you know hip hop has a bad rap and there's a lot of fucked up shit, but I think that's the illest part about hip hop. It's turned a lot of people's lives around. Yeah, it's given us lives. Yeah, it's yeah. given us careers. It's given us pathways. It's the most powerful outside music of in the world right now. Shit. Yes. Yeah. Not just, but not just musically. Like, yeah. Tot- in its totality. Yeah. Art. Like, yeah. It's amazing. Art is selling for. Hundreds of thousands of dollars now, so... Yeah, like my boy that was just tagging and bombing and fighting in the streets over fucking tags. Now he's fucking selling his shit yeah. for hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, like, it's amazing to yeah. see that. You know, to, to see B-boys and B-girls that that, that, that are, they were just these hood kids in the neighborhood dancing, traveling the world. You yeah. know, that's amazing to me. And you dance for Queen of Elizabeth. Of yeah. Elizabeth? And Queen. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth. You know, Queen Elizabeth. But she's of Elizabeth. And Madonna. And, and you grinded on Madonna. I you grinded, grinded on, on Madonna? Yeah, before she blew up. Oh. She, so lo- that, she that, loved that herself from hip-hop. That picture out there was taken by Henry Chalfa, and it was at Dance Ateria. Uh-huh. Uh, did you eight, cock her, man? Be honest. No, honestly. Wait, did you so give here's her the thing. Business? Did you give now, her the business? I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> so, there's, all right. So... She used to come to the Roxy and hang out, but before that, again, we were at Dance at Terry. So you caught I saw one of her, pers- uh, pers- her first performances there. Right. And before she became like Madonna, you know, before she had a single out. But um, when she used to hang out at the Roxy, you know, a lot, she'd be hanging out with a lot of my boys who are Latino. And I'm sure Mayor has some stories because he knows. You probably know some of the people who went to hang out on her crib. What, what's homie do from Ola Records, the main, the... the Jelly Bean? Jelly Bean Benitez yeah. and her were... That was later, a little bit later. Okay, okay. So, yeah, but the thing is, is that I was never into white she girls. Said, oh. But she was, let's let's be honest, she was she was kind of in tune with hip-hop early on. Absolutely. Early on. Yeah, yeah. For the eight, from the 80s, yeah, that, and that's because she met us in Danceteria. Right. But um, I wasn't into white girls, but a lot of my boys used, used to go and yeah, hang out at her crib. Madonna, bro? Nah, fuck that shit, bro. Oh, I, I was only dating black and Puerto Rican girls back then. That's oh, come it. come on. It was Madonna, That's man. it. Oh, you danced with Queen Elizabeth. Oh, Queen Elizabeth, yeah. So when I was there, when we went to perform for Queen Elizabeth, <laughs> I'm over here looking at her like, you know, I got to shake her hand, and she had these jewels around her neck. Did she smell like marijuana? Nah. Let's play with you. She had these jewels around her neck. <laughs> so I'm supposed to be looking at her in her eyes, like, you know, your highness or whatever. And I'm like, damn, 
I want to snatch that shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. I did not think he was going to say that. But good. Nah, I mean, again, that's and that's that double life shit. The mentality. And you, did, did you know what it meant to 83. dance for the queen? Did you know what it meant to did dance for the queen? Did oh, you, you care? Didn't? Nah, you we didn't give a fuck. Wait, wait, wait. wait. That's a two-part question. Did you know what it meant, or did you... I didn't know what it meant. Okay, all right. Maybe... Yeah, that's real. Wait, you that's didn't real. know... Yeah. I didn't know what it meant. You didn't I... know, because we, we grow up. We don't know no I'm queen. The, yo, it's the coming president. From the, coming from the hood, like... And the mayor Dinkins. Yeah, you want to meet James Brown. Ugh. But you knew that's who she was, of all, you know? But, you, but yeah. you knew who she was, what she yeah. was. Yeah, I didn't give a fuck. Okay. I didn't wow. care. Yeah, it meant nothing to me. I didn't grow up that way, you know? You got it, the pick? You got the pick? Oh, this is the pick? Well, Madonna. We got We're going back to Madonna. I'm going to ask you again. You're not going to cock Madonna back in the days? Hey, man, leave me the fuck out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, crazy legs. You was outside. Let me see. Let me see the picture. He was, he was outside. It's in the group chat. <laughs> he was outside. Was outside. Yeah. yeah. You right. Your fro but was... She, yeah, but she was cool. She right. was cool. I'm not going to front. She, she was, was not cool. a virgin. The, absolutely not. <laughs> for the very first time. I, I, I doubt like that. Like I heard it. Yeah. And then homegirl Debbie Mazar used to hang out with us. Mm. His brother dated Debbie Mazar. <laughs> and that was when she was called Debbie M, right? Yeah. Yeah, I had an amazing time, man. Let me take a shot for you. It was fun. Like, I, uh, one shot, time yeah. we end up, uh, we just, we get. I notice how you're not sticking away from the shots and sticking no, with the beat. No, good, good. I'm good. I, I, look, I think yeah, give him a good. shot. He, oh yeah, I'll, I'll take another drink. Ah. I damn. Look. So one time we get we get invited to go to a recording studio because some recording artist is a fan of ours, and, and they want to surprise him with a like in studio performance, and, and this is like 1982, and he's like one of the biggest artists out there. And uh, we go there, and it's fucking David Bowie. Oh, shit. You too? Huh? No, no, no. It's David not Bowie. It's not YouTube. Let's dance. David Bowie, not you two. What's it? Oh, who's on YouTube? David? I, not, I'd not sing, David but it's not bad. David Let's dance. Yeah. Put on your no, okay, okay, all right. I'm in. I'm in. All right, guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so we were having like interesting times like that. Right. Meeting like really bugged out punk rock people. You didn't meet Prince? Nah, I didn't meet Prince. Michael Jackson? I met my Jackson imagine. when I, I worked on a bad video. Tell us about that. Uh, but you were on the on the set? Yeah, yeah, I was in it. Was it who was in that set? Wasn't uh Wesley. Wesley Snipes. So I auditioned with Martin Scorsese for the Wesley's for that part. Really? Martin Scorsese yeah. did so that. We're video? not gonna leave yeah. with that? We're not gonna, <laughs> we're not gonna start with that. Yeah. I don't know, it's oh, not important. Oh, you, <laughs> it's all up, relevant. Just wait no, up, so I, I auditioned for him. And uh, I knew I didn't get the part immediately because he was just like, yo, you know, like, when you live a little, I think you'd be a really good actor. And I'm like, all right, well. Mm. He said live a little. Yeah, like meaning more wisdom. Life experience, life. right, right. Yeah. So um, Wesley got the part. And I ended up being an extra on the train scene in the long version of the video. But I got to hang out with him, take a picture of me and him. Martin and, uh, uh, With Michael. Martin Scorsese was I didn't even director. know who Martin Scorsese was. I found out years later. So I'm, I'm like auditioning, not giving a fuck. Don't know who he is. Huh? Send it? And in the back. Yo, huh? But okay. in that picture, you're looking at Kadeem Hardison is in there too. Yeah. Yep. Kadeem Hardison is right there. So, so, tell, so how was Michael? Did you Before interact? he blew up. You interacted with Michael on huh? that set? So did yeah. you and Mike do cocaine? Yeah. Huh? Mike didn't do cocaine, I, just feel, I felt like Mike was just going nah, 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 nah. pulled out a bag. I mean, he might tell me he did that. Then Michael did acid all of a sudden. Nah, nah, nah. All, I did, all I did was ask him for a photo and, a, and an autograph. Were you, know you starstruck by Michael, to be honest? With you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Because yeah. he was Mike back then. This is and, the 80s. Yeah, right? and on, you're, I mean, you know, he's the biggest pop star in the world. Yeah, on, and on film sets, there's a certain decorum. You, you can't right. really cross certain lines. Right. And so, he's not just that one Michael. You got Michael from the Jackson 5, who's already already a celebrity, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. So. That's it's, great. That's real, man. That's cool. God damn it, man. We've come across some interesting people like Tina Turner, Gene Kelly. I... You dealt with Tina Turner? Yeah. Tell us. Yeah. So we were going to perform in Holland and... Um, yeah, high as hell. Huh? Holland. Yeah. Yo, oh, space yeah. cakes? Space I cakes? I don't remember, so maybe, space yeah. Cakes. Yeah, space <laughs> cakes. That's Holland. That's Holland. So, uh, yeah, so there's... Not a, Hollandale. 
Eh? No. <laughs> Maybe soon. <laughs> Drunken Dragon coming soon. Hollandale. Got that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, she just wanted to meet us. We were all performing on the same show. And uh, uh, it's kind of like this person wants to meet you. And, and we're super young, so we still don't really know who the fuck she is anyway. You don't know who Tina Turner is? Back then, did we care? Damn, like, dog. You know, we're listening to, like, the message. I know it's crazy. We're, we're looking four, in back, in back right. now. You know, right. UTFO. We don't give a shit about that. Mm. You know? So, yeah, we met her. That happened with Gene Kelly, like, another surprise visit. Uh, that's the kiss? Gene Kelly? Oh, no, that's Gene Simmons. Yeah, right, now. exactly. Right, Gene Kelly, bad. legendary dancer, tap dancer, okay. all that shit. But, yeah, we... we, we um, we lived some ghetto rock star shit. All it was right. cool. So we, so we didn't cake up back then. Cake up? At all, you know? We didn't In terms cake. of what? Much. What you up to? Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> I got my Colombian brother there said well, caking up and it means something different. But well, who's somebody that, 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 that told you that they was a fan that you was blown away from? Well, the Queen was a fan. She was an actual fan. Are we talking about Queen then, Elizabeth? Yeah. She, yeah, she, she, was, she was a fan, fan of... She was an actual fan. Really? Yeah. Uh, Rest in peace. He tried to break that. George Michael. I mean, come on. He was a fan. The comedian? No, no. man. George the Michael, singer. the singer, the pop. Oh shit! I'm yeah, he was George a fan. Carlin. All right, my Because I, I, I <laughs> saw Carlin. George Carlin. So they used to have like fan mail back then, and I, and uh, in the fan mail, it's like all these questions that the fans ask, and then you fill out each one. So in his answer, when he puts uh, music that he bought or who he's into, he put Rocksteady Crew. That's dope. Yeah. Oh, damn, it's not rock yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> who who in hip hop were you a fan of that you met that you kind of were like fanboyed out? That's within mm. your own world, though. Like Cat, Grandmaster Kaz is my hero. Yeah, you know, uh, Charlie Chase is also my boy. Uh, but yeah, I would say Grandmaster Kaz because he represented the battle right. in every way. So, and, and I, I, you know, I'm all about the battle. So how old are you when you first meet him? Fuck, I was a fan of his and, and watching from the outside the ropes in mm. 70, 70, I probably saw him in 77, 78. I don't remember when he got into Cold Crush, but whenever he got in, that's when I became a fan of his. Mm. That's dope. And so it was Home Alone too that you were... Uh, um, <laughs> I was an you, extra. He was an extra at it's Home funny. Alone too, and that's the same place that you used to rob people in. That's what, that, that's what it is. I asked you that earlier. And yeah, I did a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so it's funny because we had a certain name, and I'm not going to get into it because I'll get canceled immediately. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you, you know what I'm talking about. The area in, in, in uh, Central Park, we had a certain name for it. But, uh, um, yeah, in, in 82, I think, was the highest crime rate of Central Park. And let's just say I was associated with a lot of people <laughs> involved with that. Uh, and and uh, him being one of them. Damn. Come out, you caught. And, and, and the crazy shit is that, you know, you, at a certain point you had the guardian angels, like we had confrontations yeah. with them. They were confronting y'all? Yeah, 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 yeah. We didn't know how to take that. <laughs> Cause you know, at that age you're thinking like maybe the Guardian they, angels with the- um, Yeah, yeah, yeah like they the were, berets. Yeah, they were like berets. The Yeah, so you know- you, We you, found out all of them was on cocaine as well. Huh? <laughs> We found out the Guardian agent. I wouldn't, okay. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised, man. It was just, it was dudes like us who acted like they really knew karate. Right. <laughs> and we believed the shit. I believed them, too. <laughs> and by the way, riding the train, seeing the Guardian Angels, being uh, 9 to you, 11 you like years you old. You felt safe. I felt safe. <laughs> I, I cannot front on them. Were they okay. a necessary evil in that time? Probably. Uh, I wouldn't even say they were evil, man. I, no, I'm saying... Like, who was the guy, the leader? The he, evil. Had tell. Oh, he was God. Italian. He was Italian. No, Sliwa. That, he wasn't Italian? Uh, what's his name? The guy. Curtis Sliwa. He's he Latino. Italian? He was Latino? Who? The dude? The main guy? Yeah. I thought he was Italian. Mm. Sliwa? I don't huh? know. There's a documentary no on... No matter what uh, he was, he wasn't one of us. Okay. Shit. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when they had, like, Hector Camacho and all these other dudes doing, like, uh, anti-graffiti campaigns. Hector Camacho did an anti-graffiti yes. campaign? Yes. Am I right? Yeah. Who else? Celia Cruz did an anti-graffiti campaign? No, but... Yeah, but you, look at it this way. The outer world of our existence was paying our own people to campaign against us. Right, wow. right. The New, uh, well, New York City. 
They had a big campaign against us. Wow. It's kind of like how Trump took an ad out against these brothers from, uh, from, from Central, the, Park. Right, Central Park. Right, Central Park, right. Same shit. God wow. damn it. That was, that's horrible. Yeah. That's horrible. Right, so let's talk about uh, uh, Jimmy D and Jimmy Lee, the founders of the Rocksteady crew. Yeah. Then how did they, um, how did you meet them to get down with Rocksteady? <laughs> I met, uh, so there was this place called Mom and Pop's Disco on uh, Cretona Avenue in the Bronx. You love Cretona Avenue, man. You gotta, you gotta buy Cretona Avenue. I mean, that's where I started. Yeah, you gotta so, buy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you but, had an accident on there? That's where you first got? Huh? You had an accident on Cretona Avenue? N what do you mean? No, like, no, no. Didn't you fall or something like that? Or oh, that's where you made the windmill? Because you, that's where I made, you yeah. didn't want to yeah. fall. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. So, um, uh, Jimmy D, I met them at this place called Mama Pops Disco, which was an underground nightclub. This dude, uh, Little Angel, Puerto Rican cat, used to be the DJ there, and it was where a lot of the a lot of the premier b boys and b girls would be, with, especially within a Latino community. All right. So I went there in like maybe 77, 78, and um, and at this time, sorry to cut you off, but b boy and is probably more important than MCM and DNA. Nah, everything was dope. Everything, everything was, was on the same everything level? Everything was on okay, the continue. same level. And it was all like, fresh. Yeah, it was all dope. All was dope. fresh, dope. yes. Because you got to remember, like, Kaz, Melly Mel, all of them used to be B-boys. Right. So they, they always had a relationship. Right. And when you got people like um, Jimmy D and Jimmy Lee, who were notorious at the same time, right. they were going to get their respect no matter what because mm -hmm. they were a threat. Mm -hmm. You know, so, but, and these are two fucking dudes that never grew up to be tall. Right. You know, and, and but they were. Meaning they were short. They were right? fearless. Yeah, they were fearless. And, and uh, so when I, when <laughs> yeah. I. <laughs> everyone caught on. Everyone hey, understands Watch what out saying. for the little guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, everyone, everyone knows what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, as soon as I met them, I was maybe like 11 years old. And the first thing they did was take me to go do, snatch a purse. And it didn't work out. But that was my introduction. How, the rock first thing snatch when you snatch huh? it? The first thing snatch. No, nah, it was it's fucking desolate in the Bronx. There was no one there to, to rob. <laughs> <laughs> no purses around. Not Hunts Point. Around. Not Hunts Point. You can't rob the hookers at Hunts Point. It's like it's a tumbleweed and shit. Because didn't you help um, uh, uh, clean up Hunts Point as well? Yes, uh, I became part of a program. Well, I created a program within. The, uh, the Point Community Development Co Corporation, because a lot of my boys had already dropped off. You know, so a lot of people had been murdered. And I was facing a situation of, do I go in deeper and, and, and go all the way and, and finish this out? Or do I just walk away and just say, fuck it, this shit is dumb. Right. And I walked away and I said, okay, from this point on, I'm gonna give back to the community. I'm gonna use my talent to save the lives of the people who made the same bad decisions that led to all of my boys' deaths. Right. So I volunteered for three years at the point, for three days a week, teaching dance and throwing events and, you, and bringing these kids to like wetlands and we take over the club. And, and uh, I put the kids at the, uh, at the box office. I let them sell the merch. Right. I let them host a show. I let them run the b-boy battle, everything, and to give them some sort of dignity. Right. And, and pride and, and understanding of how to do business. And that was like the first gentrification of Hunts Point. Yes. Because back yeah. then, everyone knew Hunts Point for one thing and Hookers. one thing only. But it's hookers. Yes. This is positive gentrification. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Hookers. He he took the hookers out and he started dancing. Yeah. So, God damn it. God yeah. damn it. <laughs> Walt, Disney, Walt Disney took the peep shows out and he brought in Disney. <laughs> and he took the hookers out and he brought in B-boying, God damn it. That is something yeah, yeah. He is the Walt Disney of Hunts Point, God but, damn it. But I'm gonna tell you right now, here's, here's a crazy shit. You do shit like that and you're still like, not in tune with your emotions in terms of like, the damage that you've experienced in your life and how that affects you, you know, and how much of a ticking time bomb you are of fucking tears later on when you're, you're dealing with remorse. Right. So when you have a brother call you 20 years later and knowing that he lived right around the street, a corner from a place where there's a line waiting for a crack house to open every day, just like New Jack City, right. exactly like that. Right. So um, when they call you 20 years later, randomly at different times, like, yo, you saved my life. Mm. Like, I'm doing this, this, and this now. These other people are dead. 
but you saved my life because I, I got down with you and that shit changed right, you my were that path. fork in that road and they yeah went yeah yeah this. right and, and I'm not and the crazy thing is that I was still pulling myself out of some dirt so the struggle was again still living two different lives while trying to go in the right direction and and, and, and not fall into like fuck that motherfucker we should hurt him Right. You know, or, it's the or difference I, between hurt people, hurt people is hurt yeah. people, helping people. Yeah. So and, and the thing is, is that, you know, again, it goes back to um, not pulling myself away from people who will happily do damage. There's a person and I'm not again, I'm not bringing his name up. He used to run this area that we're in right now. And not raw. Again, I am not saying names, right. <laughs> but when that Sounds person like hit it on the nose, when that person. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when, I was in this area when Zulu and all these guys were Yeah, out yeah. Here. So, so when that person heard that somebody was getting sideways with me, that person was approached. Right. And I can't, I can't have that happening, you know? Right. It's mm. like, yo, my dude, like, you're going to get me some conspiracy charge here. Mm. Like, what are you fucking doing? Like, mm. So, yeah. It's good to have the ride or dies, but sometimes you got to walk away from that shit because it'll, it'll kill you. Right. So let me ask you, if I don't ask you this question that I'm about, I'm about to ask mm -hmm. you, you know, about 30 years, maybe 40 years ago, I probably understand exactly what you're going to say, right? But I'm going to ask you to it right now. If you woke up today, right, and you had all the hip-hop history erased, and we just based in your, from what you heard from 2023 on, how much of the original DNA of hip hop still exists right now. Mierda. <laughs> Depends on which direction you're looking in. Do, oh which, yeah, that is the truth. Yeah. Okay, so you just pick which direction you want to go. Hip hop is divided. Uh huh. You have the industry that thinks it's hip hop, but doing an element of hip hop, but could care less about the rest. Mm -hmm. And then you have a lot of self-righteous hip-hop heads. Mm -hmm. And we, it would be nice if we met in the middle somewhere. Okay, self-righteous hip-hop heads and what, who else? Meaning that anything that this group over here does that's into the industry uh -huh. is horrible because it's, com it's commercial. Okay. Like, I listen to modern shit. Right. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to look at some new shit mm -hmm. as it's not hip-hop because it's not from my time. Are you fucking with little Uzi Vert? I like, fuck with all that it's shit. Like his, his he crazy breaks legs. too. He's a B boy too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like that's yeah. like crazy leg like shit. Like, I was, you know yeah, yeah, I was yeah. supposed to be in one of his videos. And, and, That'd and, be hard. You and yeah. little Uzi Vert together? Yeah. That'd one day. Hard. One day. I just want to rock. rock. He's I a good brother. Know. Whoa, that shit hard. But go ahead, nigga. Go. But um, I think it's there. But I think it, 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 it's it's divided in a big way. Right. And, and I think that that is bad for our community because that's why you have this whole other thing of. Uh, uh, Latino, whether Latinos there or not, and it's like, yeah, because you like, divided the elements, you divided the the, the community, and so it's a continuation like, of it. What's happened is, is that hip hop is a commodity that yep. is only traded in rap music, and then mm -hmm. the art, the b boys, the DJs, they take it seriously in terms of turntablism. They've all been splintered. We we to can't the point where they don't I even can't consider be themselves hip hop. I can't be mass produced like a record. Right. So I can't make as much. Right. Right. So there's a big difference. I don't get royalties off of something unless it's a film right. that I've been in. You get royalties every right. time the record is played. Right. So there's a big difference. Depending on what deal. And, I'm and think about <laughs> and think about. Yeah. Let's let's think about the. If you want to put it in a conspiracy, who benefits off of the splinter? The, the industry that, that monetizes the music cannot monetize these other elements. So they said, okay, boom, we shed that. Mm -hmm. right. This is hip-hop. But you know what's crazy? I brought it up earlier, uh, how much Europe, to me, respects hip-hop more. If you actually think about it, in Europe, the b-boy and the DJ is on the same level as the MC. Yeah. They are, but it's like changing. Like, they're on the same level. And that's how, to me... I agree. No, but it's changing. It's changing. It's They're they're changing with us, too, as well. So you meaning that the MC is becoming... A, no, no. A, they're they're becoming more Americanized in their view of hip-hop. Well, I haven't seen yes. that. I haven't been there. No, it's, I'm going to agree with the that. Internet, I haven't been there. I, I, I didn't know, you know that. Me traveling yeah, 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 yeah,
Remember, I don't remember, think there's nothing wrong with getting the bag. I no, think no, no, no. But you still have the integrity. Listen, and yes. that's the problem. This is yes, the thing. So, yes. so I've I've been doing these documentaries where I've traveled to different countries and trying to find hip hop. Yeah. Well, exploring the country through hip hop, right? Through the scope of hip hop, mm. and in every single country, the same thing has been told to me. You guys don't do hip hop anymore. <laughs> you do Lord. business. <laughs> yes. You do business. <laughs> wow. You are not you. We don't. We do not look to you anymore. Now these places that used to look to They're us, sustaining themselves as right. the innovators, as the pioneers, they look to themselves and their and their neighbors. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like in, I went to Vietnam. Vietnam looks to Korea and Japan. Yeah. And to right. themselves. I went to Colombia. Yeah. Colombia by itself is, is look doing for Diego. Its thing. It, it's like <laughs> hip hop. Hip hop. And, and Diego and, was there too. <laughs> yeah. And they were like, yeah. I think uh, the message in hip hop no longer exists. From right. our perspective over here. Right. Fuck. You know? Like, where's the message? Again? But we still got the but Kendricks. What's, what sucks is that hip-hop is the number one cultural export of the United States yeah. to the world. Yeah. And the United States and ourselves do not identify that yeah. and Fuck. make sense of it to and make and make it a thing that we could either monetize and it, or, or politicize or, or make it a, a political thing. We just don't use and, it the And the right fact way. that... Breaking comes from the fucking backyard of the United States, and not one of them has been sponsored who, who are going to the Olympics by anything in the United States. Right. Shows how much regard they have for us. On right. It. Yeah, well, we're assholes. Yeah, well, we're, we're, fu we're fucking shit up. <laughs> well, you know what? Um, we've been talking about this hip hop union for a long time, right? Uh -huh. Me and EFN. Um, when we started this show, we was like, yo, I forget who was sick in hip hop. And we was like, wait a minute, their bills wasn't paid or something like that. And we were like, yo, hip hop needs a union. There's no way you can put in 20, 30 years of work, in your case, 45 years of work, and then you get sick and it should be on your family. Like it was on your family to miss, you know, yeah. Christmas when you was performing in France. It was on your family to miss Thanksgiving when you was performing yeah. in Russia. Like, why should your family bear? Why what, shouldn't we have a union? That would why? be nice, but until that No happens, one trusts no one? I just have to operate as, you know, I operate as if no one owes me anything and I got to handle my shit. N I'm, I'm responsible for my own relevance and my own finances and, and how I take care of my own medical. And if there's something comes where there's a fund for people like myself who are pioneers, like if I'm well off at the moment, I probably wouldn't accept it because there's probably else. Yeah, yeah, but, else but that should be the luxury. It. No, no, but that yeah. should be the luxury. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. The thing about it is, especially you know, um, with with how we're kind of owning our own stuff now, like yeah. we're actually in the era, and especially with podcasts, you know. Yeah, I would love. You know, uh, you know, to stop talking about it, and I would love to, like, you know, Joe Budden. Well, Chuck D, you know, Chuck D, he's created something. I, I don't know. Well, let's down it to it. Joe Button, million dollars worth of game. Gillian Wallow, you know, Norian EFN. Uh, I think we should put up a couple dollars and just put it in a in a pot where it's it's, it's see through. Put it in Killer Mike's bank. I trust Killer Mike. And I trust his bank. And just leave that shit there and, until, not to say that we want something catastrophic to happen, but if something happens, if, 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 uh. Little something. If, if uh. But that's yeah. not the way it works, man. No, we gotta make it up. No, the thing that's about not the way it, it works. No. It's not the way it works. I, yeah. Chuck D, I, I think his Karis one's involved. They got the government involved. You need bigger funds. To really make a difference, you can't. We can't take a couple podcasts and put a couple dollars in when Why we not? fucking need the dollars ourselves. But we can Why still not? empower each other. That's the yeah, thing. That's so what to I'm me, saying. if it's like empowering some some you know, people who are representing the United States on the highest level ever, get them six hundred Gs. Or if it's, you could raise funds, that's the thing. Yeah, you have to can, raise yeah, the funds. But this, here's the thing, right? A lot of us don't know, don't understand uh, how do we do that, right? Okay, cool. You said Chuck D has an idea. So such no, has no idea. idea. They did it. They did okay, something. Okay, okay, all need right, to all right. Investigate. And, and I more. feel like we should do something, right? And and this is something that I just learned, right? I went to Opus One, right? 
And Opus One, I thought I knew. Which is a great wine, by yes, the way. Yes, it's a great fucking wine, <laughs> right? So I went to the factory, right? And I really thought I knew everything about wine, right? And he, he, he gave me the 2018, he gave me the 2016, he gave me the 2022. Oh, you for the 96. And then, no, I did not. <laughs> but you're, you're correct. I heard the 96 is fantastic. He didn't have, right? But I went through it all, and I loved them all. And then he brung me what was later considered the throwaway. Uh, and we all yeah. drank it, and we all said, this is our favorite, right? And he said, you know why? It's because that's exactly what it is. It's what you want it to be. Right. Sometimes we can sit around and just sit around and say, let's wait for it to be perfect and let's wait for Al Sharpton to come over there and do some jump ropes with us and then, you know, yeah. do it. And then sometimes it's just like, let's just do the right thing. Do the right thing is let's just... Just whatever, whatever, and if anything happens, because that's really you take what, it as what, far as you can take. That's it. really what insurance is. It's just in case shit happen, right? So just so let's just throw whatever, whatever. Maybe we're we're not gonna do it the right way. Maybe we're not. But the fact is, I will feel fucking awesome knowing that a hip hop legend caught a stroke, and for us as podcasters. We stepped up and said his family bills are taken care of. That shit. I would, yeah. yesterday I couldn't sleep at night. That wouldn't make me sleep at night like that. But yeah. let, me, let me tell you this. This is you helping yourself. Let me rebuttal you this. How are me helping myself? Me, I don't plan let to me, let, me, let me give you a rebuttal. Okay. If Chuck D, who I trust, has always had the best interest of hip-hop mm -hmm. in his heart, if he's leading... Chuck D ain't come to drink champs. No, but... Chuck okay. D ain't reach out back to us. And you know what? Chuck There's D don't even wrong answer my it. phone call. Okay, okay, Chuck D, yes. Yeah. So there you go. That's between you and Chuck Chuck D should have been here. Chuck D done did all white right, media right. crazy since we reached out. He said he does not do interviews, and all of a sudden, he's been doing every other right, interview. Okay, that's your beef. So, so let me that's just not my beef. It's me, our beef. Let me finish. <laughs> okay. So if, if he's doing okay. something... Him and there's a coalition of people involved, and they they're doing it the right way. My thing is, let's contribute to what they're doing because if we're but again, why they contribute to what we're doing? Up, We've been bro. saying this for seven no, years. Hold up, but about then it goes back to the splintering of it of everything. Oh, yeah. Green Boys do this, and, and Graph Riders do this. Okay, you yeah. know what? You do that, Chuck D. Podcasters do this. Fuck it, we're all gonna do it different because I'm, it's gonna make me feel better. No, bro, no, I, wanna, I no. wanna contribute to the movement no. that is gonna do it right. The organization's no, gonna do it right. Because we've been speaking this for seven years, and I've been watching, and, we been and I've been watching it. the fans for seven years. Tag this man on Twitter. Who? I follow him on Twitter, Chuck D. And every one of these other people, and guess what? None of them have ever hit me on DM. None of them have ever pursued that. So I'm tired of waiting for our forefathers, our near fathers, well, our close doing fathers. It, our close. Why didn't they reach out? You mean to tell me? You mean to tell me? Hold on, EF, and let's they be clear. They didn't reach out to us to do it. Let's just be no. clear. Well, no, no, no. Why did they reach out for us to be a part of it? You mean to tell me every time they say something or every time something like that with a hip hop union is is is, is, is brought up? I love our fans on Twitter because you know what they say. Nori and them been saying yeah, this for seven absolutely, years. Absolutely. For seven years. Absolutely. For seven years. Absolutely. And I'm not willing to talk about it no more. I'm willing to put the same way I'm willing to invest into Drunken Dragon in Hollandale, which I'm doing. The the same way I'm willing to invest in Foxhole, which I'm doing. The same way I'm, I'm willing to put up a couple of such and such just to have an account, just in case if Maxwell fall and break his ankle, mm -hmm. let's help out! That's now if he's talking to Maxwell? I'm fucking around. <laughs> Man, I'm fucking and, and, and here's yeah. the thing, here's the thing. I, so for me, as a dancer, there are times when I've had insurance and I didn't have insurance. Right. So whatever I had in the bank went towards my surgeries. Right. Mm -hmm. So with an hour, our, our lane as dancers, we get fucked up the most. Yes, y'all do. And, and we're all taking care of ourselves. Right. Like, I've come out of pocket so much money for the shit that I do, just for the love of hip hop. Right. So there's a lot of people out there who are representing, and I think that's probably like the most injuries, you know, for dance, you know, in right. hip hop. But, uh, you like, know, it's, it's a lot so of dancers many need help. Funerals. God bless. There's yes. so many hip hop funerals that you go and start to see, and you be like, damn, this shit is not taken care of. That shit is like, 
Like that's I, I, I mean, and, and, I, and EF and I, I don't because I, I had a rebuttal with you. I don't want you to say that I'm disagreeing and I'm disagreeing. No, no we're with having Chuck a DM, what, he's, what he's doing. The problem is we're so available, we're so out there, and our platform actually exists. Right. Our platform actually exists where weekly. Guess what? Weekly. Guess what? Your, pl guess your platform is a force. And weekly. guess what? Guess what? <laughs> Chuck and whoever who else is doing it, maybe. And Chuck maybe, is a fan of the platform. Maybe, maybe he said he's willing to come. Maybe okay, well, Maybe y'all. Maybe y'all didn't want to come in, but at least let's promote y'all platform on this platform because this is what it's made for. It's right. made for us because I guess I guess what. Go ahead and try to go to Hot 97. Now they got 94.7. Yeah. The beat. Let's big up um uh Cypher Sounds, Mick yeah. Jones. Yeah. Sounds, Miss Jones. I think Mr. C is over there, and they're Dope. actually. This is another station besides Rock the Bells, and I love Rock the Bells, but Rock the Bells cannot say that they did not base what we were doing off, of, and we were giving our legends their flowers. I think we, and we, we still we, are we giving our the legends their of flowers of a lot so in this current I would moment. Really, I'm actually an equity owner of Rock the Bells. Come on, goddamn! <laughs> no, goddamn, no. <laughs> I love what Elle's doing. I love Rock yeah, the yeah, Bells. No, we love. Yeah, they, 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 they did reach out. They reached out. They reached out to several of us, and and they did give us equity in the company. That's beautiful. Uh, and so I gotta salute them. Elle's, beautiful. Elle's beautiful doing brother. great things with Rock the Bells. Yeah, yeah. I, I got nothing. I will never have anything bad to say about it. Okay, KRS One and uh, KRS One have launched the union. Yeah. All right, cool. I'm and I'm mad. Why are you mad? Because they should holler at y'all. Because <laughs> come on, man. No, no. I, mean, I understand. It's, it's, I understand, but you can't I, I'm get playing, mad. But I'm not playing. The thing about it is, we can't be outdated. Like we can't be sitting around and do something that was brought up publicly on this show for seven strong years. But we live in an era where nobody even sees everything. Yep. Yes, but there's someone in his camp, just like George Clinton just came here. George Clinton, ain't, I could tell he never saw an episode of Drink Champs in his fucking life. And, and, and I loved him but, being here anyway. But his grandchildren said, this is the place where you're supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, that's true. So you true. mean to tell me that once they set up that campaign, they ain't no, it wasn't no one who said Drink Champs was saying this shit for seven years. They've been trying, they've been waving. But, 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 but. Maybe they've been saying it for 17 years. We ain't hear it. But I ain't hear it in their records. I got every one of their albums. I'm just saying. I got every one know. of their albums. We don't I got know. every one of the... I'm I ain't hear it. We don't know. We don't know. Got to give the benefit yeah, of the doubt. Yeah, I've been to MySpace, yeah, motherfucker. It's all Black Planet. You been to MySpace? Yeah, yeah. I've been fucking around. I don't know why he said that. He's throwing, throwing us off. Black Planet.com, He's throwing us Or Fear the Black Planet. But I want me to simply support that. I'm not saying I don't support it. I'm saying I have no control over that. I have nothing. I have no information of that. Cool. You know, uh, our engineer just sent that to us. Um, this should be front page news. But this should, me in this but it's, a pro it's, 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 it's probably the problem it's that it's just, not front page news. Guess, guess what? Not ours, but guess it's, what? It's, it's the media. Guess what, sir? In case you, you don't know. That. Every time we drop, we front page news. Yes. We front page yeah. fucking news. Yes. Regardless if we want it, and sometimes we don't even want it. We don't want it. Definitely. It's a lot of times where I'm like, you stay in Kindu, and I'm staying y'all. I didn't do it. No, it it wasn't me. No, no. There's a lot of times we don't want front page news, but this is something, and that's... But we care about the community. We care about hip-hop. Yeah, but this, 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 is, this is what we have to do. It, it can't, like, like you said, it can't be a KRS-One, a Chuck D thing, uh, and... A, a, a crazy legs thing, a rock steady thing, and then a drink champs thing. Okay, cool. Maybe it's not a drink champs thing. We all we, need to come we together. We say podcasting. We handled it all part because we couldn't handle it. Because absolutely, if we could have, we would have did it seven years ago. Right. So let's just do to the people. We know that uh, uh, Joe Button is happy from from doing what he's doing. We know that a uh, million dollars worth of game. These are people that we can come and talk to and say, listen, let's just. Maybe it's a podcast fun. Maybe Chuck D and them is the, uh, like the Jerry Lewis telling is, 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 is the rap, and then and then maybe, but but the thing is sitting around and doing nothing and sitting around just sitting around sitting around and sitting around it makes us seem like we're just talking. But that's what I'm I don't saying. Let's talk, talk to no the more. people doing something. I don't want to talk. See no if more. we can fit in. If we can't, then we don't. No, no. At the end of the day, you no, sort, we don't fit. You in. source out the needs. You raise the funds and you you put that shit into work. And I, 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 I agree with you said. You said raise the funds. That's also that's also what we're doing. And not only that, we want to give back. It should it should be something like that. But we give back. Count like, me in, bro. There's so much beautiful we, we, things that that we obtain, yeah. 
And it's not always about finances and riches. Mm. It's about, okay, man. Support. We, we, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. look at that shit. Look at the, look, that's George Clinton artwork. Yo, he yeah. did that right he there did behind, this whole, you, behind you. He came George Clinton and did, did the that whole, behind look you. Look at that. That's all. That's I, got, I got a George Clinton story, but I can't say this one. What, <laughs> what's, the, what's, what's the other artist's name? I always want to give him Jonas. <laughs> Yeah, with George Clinton. They both did Come that. Come on, let's together. give us that George Clinton story. Let's go. Is acid involved? There's, there's, that there's, one I, I there's expect something acid. involved. But was he open about shit like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, yeah, let's yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Cocaine so, and everything. Yeah, yeah he was <laughs> open. He was oh, okay, yeah. open book. Open book. So, so it was like a Zulu anniversary, and, and I'm over here, like, you know, I'm thinking, you know, nothing but the dog in me is in the back, you know what I'm like? And, and then all of a sudden, like, I'm, I'm taking him to. Uh, I had to drop him off at his hotel as a favor. Right. And he just started like, he opened up a little packet in the back and I hear, <laughs> and I'm like, yo, this motherfucker's wildin' in my car right now. Ain't nothing but the dog. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh -huh. And you were like, I could've sold it to him. <laughs> <laughs> All stuck them up. I never sold singer. that though. <laughs> I thought you said you bought eight balls. No, I bought something to. Oh yeah, to sell them the plane. <laughs> my memory is good. Oh, you only sold it a plane. You only sold it a plane. I don't consider plane. that. Or you're like my yeah, high was the international it was, it was, that doesn't count. It was count. a quick yeah, 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 hustle. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I wasn't a dealer. That was oh, my boys. Oh my god. Yo, oh, man, well, crazy legs, man. Let me just tell you something. You're a legend of a legend. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, Thank you. We, 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 we clearly made this show for people like you. Um, Hip Hop 50, I know you kind of said you didn't agree with Hip Hop being 50. You said 47. But I'll cool. stand with it. You'll stand with it. I will stand with it. You'll stand with it. Yeah. And in your opinion, you said 47, 48. 48. 48, which is two years off, and that's the, you know we're pretty much all drug. Dealers. I think that discrepancy is yeah, fine. So it's like, it's like round <laughs> you, it you off. did acid. This is good. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, two years you might have crapped because the acid. You yeah. know what I mean? You never know. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> that was yeah, because two years for the ecstasy is like it's gone. I mean, <laughs> yeah, um, but we want you to know you're a legend. Uh, hip hop owes you. Yep. Uh, and not just b boying, you know, because, um, you know, it's crazy. Like you look at. These records now, these records have a dance to go with the record. Yeah, yeah, it's, dance is still there. It's a part you of know, it. For, but for me, I've always felt like I'm hip-hop before my, I'm a b-boy. Mm. Because when I got into the game, I saw I witnessed everything happening without any kind of label over it. Mm -hmm. It was just what was happening, like a girl doing double dutch. You lived right. it. You know, it was... You were it. Yeah, so for me, I'm always hip-hop before I'm a b-boy. But we want to... Uh, Show you love. Is there anything you regret before you got out of here? Um, not finishing school. Oh shit. Definitely. Damn. I was on that path. I ended up in, in Hunter College and I used to... That's in the Bronx, Hunter. Oh, no, no the Hunter College is on, on 67th Street and... Um, you never went Lexington. to school in the Bronx? Yeah, no, no, I'm talking about college. No, oh. no. Well, okay. I did go to Bronx Community for a minute. Okay. Uh, then I switched to Hunter College and then... Um, me and this dude, um, why am I forgetting his name? Ah, oh, God, not The Rock, the other one that hates him. <laughs> Vin Diesel. We used to go to Hunter College together. We used to hang out. Yeah, we used to. <laughs> you and Vin Diesel went to school together? Wait, uh, yeah, we hold went on, to Hunter College. Did you together. almost forget you went to fucking college with Vin Diesel? Did you almost forget that? Yeah. Your life is dope. Make some noise for that. <laughs> <laughs> but he used to be a b-boy. He was a B-boy first. Yeah, he was a B-boy first. All right, Vin what, Diesel, what, 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 Vin Diesel he, needs to come to drink. Was he now. Vin or Diesel at the time? He, he was Vin. Yeah, he was just Vin. He Vin, wasn't Diesel. Vin B-boy. Nah. Uh, <laughs> oh, come on, bro. Mr. Lee. <laughs> so we used to hang out in a, in a cafeteria of Hunter College and try to pick up on a girl's playing space. So Vin Diesel all the time. from New York? Yeah. No, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Where are you no? Where you talking from? Turks and Caicos. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I mean, you know, hopefully I, all this stuff in detail, it, it, we are working on a, um, a couple of films right now. Me and Fat Joe and Eve Rivera working on a um, Latino contribution in hip hop documentary. Ooh. Ooh. Um, you know, more, more. You guys can get drink champs involved. In that. Yeah, of yeah. course. I mean, we want to definitely do it as something that's educational. We don't want to cause more divide, just provide data. For, uh, I mean, yeah, we want to provide data for people. And say, yo, boom! If you're not sure, this is where, right, who, and it. when, and, and 
Now, if you want to be an asshole, that's up to you. Right. You know, and, and so there's that. And then we're doing the Rocksteady documentary right now. Beautiful. Um, uh, which is uh, all going to be from, from my perspective. And um, then there's a few other things on the table. We'll see what happens. But some, is is Rocksteady synonymous with Zulu? Is it no. one? No, not at all. We're our own thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of good shit. You know, for me, it's about my festival in Puerto Rico, working on these films, and then um, a lot of relief work, but expanding beyond Puerto Rico. Because with all the shit that, that just happened in Turkey, I felt like, Damn, man. wow, so I know heart, how to bring people, rich. you know, the opportunity to have clean water. I know what, what that takes. But, you know, then you need to start needing more financial resources to make that happen. You've seen the dude, and I've mentioned, <laughs> I, and I'm sorry I don't know the guy's name right now, and I've mentioned him before. He has the machine that extracts air yeah. into clean yeah. water, and yeah. he's from the United States. Like, that dude is incredible, yeah. man. Wow. We, we did, I mean, we, man, we did shit. In, in and he's donating his machines to That's causes. Good. Tesla, to good Tesla causes. was donating a bunch of shit, too. Elon? Yeah, he, he donated. Elon, Elon? Uh, Elon, 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 yeah. I was like, Elon? Homie. I call him Elon. So they, during Hurricane Maria, Eli. they... Elon. We, we were, there was this one community that we went to where their their source of water was like two, three hundred feet down. And there was this really old 1973 uh, diesel generator that the U.S. government dropped off during the hurricane. Like, here, figure it out. All right. And Tesla donated these batteries that would generate the water 300 feet up uh. to a community of 800 families. Tesla did that. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So we helped. Yeah. Well, Eli's doing his thing. Well, Eli is all right. <laughs> yeah, all right with the Yala. He let me go uh, crazy on Twitter. He's a little wild boy. <laughs> He's a wild boy. <laughs> I'm just playing, man. Yo, Crazy Legs, Thank man. You. I'm going to be honest, man. You, Rocksteady, you know, all the things that you contributed to hip hop. We'll be remorse to not, you know, always throw flowers at you Thank and you, always, you know, respect what you do. And I, I, I'd like, you know, I enjoy this when I when I get the pioneers, when I get the legends, when I get the icons, and I just explore their history. Like I said, for a month, I've just been walking around like you. Like, I don't that's why my, my big boy, you see my big boy, he just, he fell. Because <laughs> we, we, we thinking about, you know what I mean, like, man, B boying, me learning that B boying and break dancing is is two different things. Me learning that break dancing is actually a uh, frowned upon word. And yes, it was, it was frowned upon. But now, you know, but it's crazy me even learning that. But breaking is not right. <laughs> Yeah. Are you saying break dance? It's kind of like when you say salsa, you just say salsa. Right. You don't say, "Hey, we're gonna go salsa dancing." <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, um, man, we just want to tell you, man, uh, our show is based on you know giving legends and you know people that's been in this game for more than ten years they flowers because you know let's just face it, hip hop is the only age ism music yeah. there is. Yeah. Pink Floyd and, you know, all these other mm -hmm. people can go, you know, that's why I said Gene Simmons earlier. That's the dude with yeah, the tongue, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, people don't even know he's old because he had on makeup his whole face. So goddamn time. And he can go and tour and he can do this and no one says he's washed up. Oh. But they don't have elements either. And that's the difference between hip hop as well. They're just yeah, music. Yeah, well, we got to. They're just music and drugs. And we got everything we gotta, else. We got we to gotta, we gotta figure it the fuck out. Because the last time I checked, you know, if you take a good meal and you season it correctly and you put it in there, the fridge, and you get it out three days later and you take that out well marinated, it's still right. good. But it's fantastic. You know what you think you about it? That, you know what that's called? Seasoned. Yeah. Chanji. Yeah. And, and, and that's and, what the fuck. So technically, hip hop, if, it's, if hip hop is about 50 years old, it's just realizing its own wisdom. Is the adobo seeking in? I think. I think. It's still young. If it were a human being at fifty, you know, a lot of us are coming to terms Absolutely. with our own remorse, regrets, right? All kinds of shit. And at fifty years old, uh, you still uh, busting nuts. Uh, Holla! <laughs> but, but the individual can come up with those things, but when you've been yeah. hijacked by corporations, yeah, then, it's a whole other <laughs> mixed beans. Enough know, of right? us are still alive to make shit right. You know, or at least plant the seeds. We may not see it in our lifetime. Or at least speak it. I mean, we can't do it for the sake of seeing it in our lifetime because that's unrealistic. Mm -hmm. You know? 
So we have to just plant the seeds and hopefully that shit works into something for somebody else later on. I think it will. I'm good with that. I think we're doing it. It ain't about me. It ain't about us. Yeah. I like the back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> it works. Yo, man. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Man. Word. Appreciate that. Thank man. you, Bear. Hey. I'm, I'm Thank you for the flowers. I'm not, the picture. I'm not gonna yes. stop drinking. I'm gonna keep going. You good? Take some pictures go. and do some drops, and then we good. Yeah. I'll be yeah, over yeah. there. Bath.